Hello, everybody. For the first time tonight, for the first time on the stream, hello. Fuck me. How did that happen? I'm so sad. How many people took these fucking clips? Oh no. Why? Why, guys? Please. There's like 50 fucking clips. Guys, come on. Don't be weird. Oh, wait. Actually, I don't know. It's hard to tell. Wait. So, I... Hold on. No way. No way, you guys. There's like 50 of these. What are you even going to do with this information? Oh, you guys are weird. I'm so sad. Time to move? Why are there so many? There's so many, dude. Man, okay. Okay. Ban them all. Oh, shit. Hold on. I have the wrong thing on the scene collection. One sec. Is this gonna crash OBS? Wait, can you guys see? Okay. I think it broke. Did it break there for a second? I had to change the profile or whatever it is. Okay, we're good. Okay. Hey, I mean, address is better than IP, is it? I don't know. Actually, no, not even close. All right, hi, everybody. Okay. We're going to watch some movies. This is the non staple timeline. <laughs> This never you know what? I I, I didn't have line. enough coins. Maybe if you guys wailed out a little bit harder. Okay? That would have been nice. Let me make sure that I actually got my thing shipped, though. I think they got shipped. Let me make sure. One sec. Could you imagine if all that and they didn't even get shipped? <laughs> That'd be so sad. Uh, let me see. What is this? Dude, I can win a freebie prize. Hold on. I can win the mother-daughter love heart necklace. Yeah. Got it. Done. <laughs> okay. Claimed. So these are coming to me. Track or... If tracking is not available in seven days, please contact... Okay, got it. Okay. Got it. I was in the middle of watching the VOD. I'm sorry, Atomic Boo. I'm sorry. I didn't know it does... Does it kill the VOD as you're, like, doing it? That's crazy. Close one, okay, champ. I knew. I knew that time it wouldn't happen. Just like you knew the first time. Okay. All right, let's watch some movies. Oh, pay out. Pay out. Man. Okay. I made Bono Wall? What is this? Why? Why did you make this? For what? When would we ever use this? Huh? When you get Dono walled so much that you die? <laughs> For Halloween? Okay, maybe I'll turn it on on Halloween. Actually, I have some open spots. Fine, it's added. For whatever reason. Okay. All right, you guys ready for movies? We're going to uh we're going to we're going to start with some uh 
a little bit of React Mojo for a little bit, okay? And this is actually a brand new one that just came up. And I've decided we, we record the intros for React Mojo after, because if the videos suck, we I don't want to record an intro for it, you know? If we get a good night of it, perfect. So let's see. All right. Okay. The first one <laughs> is actually pretty fresh. Somebody in chat found this. Guys, we've read about the misdeeds of certain characters in media. Chief Wiggum, Tom and Jerry. But there is one war criminal that has gone unscathed. His crimes he has not answered for. These are the top ten worst things Squidward has done. Now, I don't know how much influence Squidward has. I don't I haven't seen the new episodes. I don't know what Squidward's up to. I think number one is probably just be mean to SpongeBob. But maybe he's committed some crimes. I don't know. Let's take a look. SpongeBob, do you remember that little talk we had about personal space? It's okay, Squidward. I'm official. Look. What could Squidward have done? Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst things Squidward has done. Patrick, you are the dumbest idiot it has ever been my misfortune to know. You These are the moments where he proves just how awful he can be. What do you think is the most horrendous deed the cephalopod has committed? Share I don't with know. Us in That's the why I'm below. here. Please tell Number me. Number 10. Sabotaging SpongeBob's audition. Here I go! That is the Whoa. stupidest dance move I've ever seen. <laughs> Who put you on the planet? <laughs> Our big nosed narcissist Didn't thinks he's SpongeBob the best win though? Because he sabotaged it? That may be true only under very specific conditions. Unexpectedly, he immediately grows jealous when SpongeBob's dancing at work lands him an audition. To help his neighbor nail the audition, no? oh. Squidward has SpongeBob carry out extensive exercises. I thought he helped The first him. Okay. few end in frustration, but he finally gets SpongeBob to the point of exhaustion, causing him to miss his audition and allowing Squidward to steal the spot. Well, oh, SpongeBob, no. the moves. That is bad. Thankfully, Squid gets a taste of his own medicine when he finds out he'll be dancing for his rival, Squilliam. Number nine, cheating. Are they not brothers? I thought they were related, right? No. Strike and manages to conspire And then bring your Squid's surplus dedication. value here to the stream. Sponge decides to go and dismantle the Krusty Krab entirely. And to think the two were about more deserving. A quiet and enjoyable day, Squidward is disrupted by the two blowing bubbles oh, filled hell with messages. Oh hell no. Squidward about to make him hate if each I other. Had a dollar for every brain you Squillert. don't have. I'd have one dollar. The grumpy cephalopod decides to start blowing bubbles filled with insults, tricking the two into thinking that they were still talking to each other. <laughs> yeah, you aren't getting pity for the eventual soda disaster. What a surprise. Soda disaster? The man. He moved to that, like, other place, and it was worse. Number five. So Steve really, this is all his fault. SpongeBob's diary. Bert to Little Yellow Squidward. Book, which sees him stealing SpongeBob's diary and reading it aloud for Krusty Krab patrons to hear. What that's from? Wait, that's what this thi that he's. This is from Plaid. I didn't know that. What? The meme. Oh, I would have never guessed this. Does he turn into a chicken when he sees plaid? That's what this is? Did he just lick his tentacle to turn the page? Did he? Krusty Krab patrons to hear. Why do you think of Mr. Krab's new plaid? And I eyes mean, convert to publicly humiliate oh, someone as will nail the audition. Well, I mean, he's he like underwater, right? So like, probably very slippery. Oh, Krab's new Even hey! What made number four? Okay. Taking advantage of SpongeBob's hospitality. There, there. Never mind. You That's kind of fucked up, Spingeword. That's kind of fucked up. You sleep in my bed. Okay, but just till I get a job. One day, two days time. Content creators. <laughs> you stay as long as you need to. SpongeBob ought to be regarded as a saint for housing Squidward after he lost his job, because it turns out the grumbling grouch is an awful housemate. 
Much of the episode, Can You Spare a Dime, shows Squidward <laughs> being unbearably needy as he expects SpongeBob to be at his beck and call. As if things couldn't get more ridiculous, he orders SpongeBob to wear a maid's outfit while doing his tasks. And Based. why aren't you in uniform? It's about time you got here! Honestly, we totally sympathize with Mr. Absorbency, even when he goes into a fit of Who's frustration. Mr. Oh, that's SpongeBob. And to think all of okay. this happened because of a Absorbency. stupid dime. Because when I need a job done, I get someone with a job to- This is all just memes, dude. They just try to find any excuse they can to fill this with memes. I do that that's what this job. is. What are you saying? Number three, humiliating SpongeBob for loving his grandma. <laughs> That's number three? Isn't this great? What? Everybody's in a good mood today. I... Isn't SpongeBob supposed to be like 30? Love bursting your bubble, SpongeBob. They're laughing at you, not with you. You know, one would think an older individual like Squidward would avoid acting in an immature and child. Co workers would probably make fun of me, you know? And I think they'd have the right to. I don't think that's a bad bet. Anyone he deems beneath him. So, of course, he'd make fun of SpongeBob for getting kisses from his grandma. On top of that, he manages to get several Krusty Krab patrons in on it, and they all laugh and mock SpongeBob even after he cries his heart out. I have been publicly humiliated for the last time. Dude, this whole show Kids is just SpongeBob getting made fun of. That's at the core of the whole thing. Don't let this dumb adult fool you. It's perfectly fine to get kisses from your grandma. Uh, gr yeah, but maybe not in front of your job when you're a grown man. You know? There's a time and a place for everything. That's probably not it. Yeah, well, I don't, I don't wear that blazer very much, so. Sure. I don't know when you're going to wear a blazer, but... All of them? I feel like you should have more clothes than that. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Yep. I'm watching how much Squidward has ruined SpongeBob's life. The answer is a lot. He's pretty bad. He's pretty. He's he's a bad friend. Yeah. Yeah. I love you. Wait, you heard it on stream? Yeah. Are you watching? Oh, okay. No, I watched it. Well, if you think of it, let me know. I love you. Did you win anything on Quality? Oh, I won a bunch on Quality. I won a bunch on Quality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something about a dragon or a unicorn? I won a whale. The whale. I won a giant whale, but that's not for you. That's for them. I don't care about me. Okay. I care about your daughter. No, she doesn't get the whale. No, they get the whale. The what whale's for them. I, I got her a plenty of prizes, but not this. So. What did you get me? Out of uh, all the things, what did you get me? No, I got you so I don't remember, but I did get you something. Mm -hmm. I got you avocado earrings. <laughs> no, you'll see. You'll see. I did get you something. I'm serious. Mm -hmm. I got I got a lot of prizes. They're shipping now. So. Can we like, just put them on a shelf? Mm -hmm. the They're going all over the room. Yeah. I love you. Yeah. Thank you for stopping by. Well, if you think of it, let me know. I love you. Okay. Yeah. Shh, don't breathe. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Shut up, shut up. I didn't say anything. I didn't say, I said how much I love you and how proud I am of our daughter for Get going up. to bed yeah. in the Get toilet. Up. No. Going uh, to bed in the toilet. For going Stand potty up. in the toilet. Stand up. Why? I want to know what was said. I didn't say anything. It said, tell Mal. Tell Mal? Yeah. I didn't say anything. No, I said I was so proud that she went in the toilet. That's what I said. I said I was so, why are you like a businesswoman with this placer? What? Okay, you want me to take it off? No, <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. I said... That I was so because proud of our little girl, and you're such a great mom. That's what I said. Truly. I didn't say anything. That's what I said. If everybody's telling me, tell Mal what 
you actually said. What That's what I said? said. That's what I said. Truly. Chat, tell Mallory what he asked. That's what I said. That's what I said. I love you. Okay. I'm going to leave you alone. You know okay. I'm going to bother your guys. You got it. Okay. Smart. I love you. All right. I love you very much. All right. I'll be off tonight. I'm missing something and I'm mad. I'm sorry. Try me a lot. Okay. It's like the end of a thriller. <laughs> Whoa! My blazer! Stop laughing at me. I'm not laughing at you, I'm laughing with you. That was your blazer? You threw my blazer. Top 10 things Coney has done. She never knew. I have to wait for her to leave. She's still behind me. She's still behind me. I'm wait. I'm going to pretend like I'm not streaming. One second. She's doing. I love you. What did you do? I didn't do anything. <laughs> I didn't do anything. What are you I doing? Really don't trust this. What are you doing? I didn't do anything. Because I'm talking to you here, and then I keep seeing the screen that says. Because they're Mal just, Mal they're having a laugh. Tell Mal what you said. What did you I do? I said I was so proud of did our daughter I, and you. Did you say I was Squidward? No. <laughs> did I say you were Squidward? No. I didn't say any of that. I didn't this say anything. I didn't say anything. Come right this way. Come on, sweetie. Say good night, chat. Good night. Good night, good night. guys. Good night. Good night. Okay. You really said that to me. Yeah. That was an awful thing to say. Just hit play on me and then you're going to be in the same room or like at the same time. You're like, what the fuck? I'm not I'm not paying attention. <laughs> She's going to bed. <laughs> She'll never know. Okay, let's get back to Squidward. Grandma, could you not mention this to the guys down at the Krusty Krab? No problem. Nah, but for real, if you love your grandma, you're cringe. <laughs> <laughs> this is me. This is me and the rest of chat laughing at you. Number two, <laughs> neglecting Gary. You need to take Gary for a walk twice a day. Neglecting Saturday. Gary? Sunday, a three-day weekend. One of Squidward's what? worst traits is how he puts himself before literally anyone All or three? anything else. And this was crystal clear in I Was a Teenage Gary. All Squid had to do was take care of Gary while SpongeBob was away for the weekend. Ah, the snail! I forgot the snail! Oh, oh my god! Holy shit! Alright, that's the poor kinda snail bad. ends up starving and getting dehydrated while Squid really gets kinda to enjoy bad. himself the entire time. Thankfully, Gary only needed a small drink of water to get back to normal. Oh. Even so, it's almost hard to believe that Squidward would stoop this well, low. <laughs> and yet, here we are. Eat, 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 eat Gary! Eat! eat. Before we unveil our number Holy one pick, shit. here are some honorable mentions. Dishonorable terrible mentions. food. How do you work at a restaurant for 17 years and not know how to cook? 17 years? How old is he? What the fuck? 
He's the cashier. You think this is funny? That's true. In a cosmic sort of way, yes. Well, Mr. Funny. His man, job isn't to be a chef. Is this how you get your sick kicks? What? It's just an ordinary crabby. Oh my goodness! Squidward! Faking an injury. He really thought he could just live off workers' compensation for the rest of his life? <laughs> Faker! Wait, what? Why? That looked like he got hurt at work. I mean, like, what was wrong with that? Tricking SpongeBob and <laughs> into thinking he's dead. Okay, maybe he got tricked, though. Maybe Bugs Bunny tricked him. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I've seen this before. You Bugs Bunny moment. Yeah, I feel like, I feel like this isn't Squidward's fault. Maybe he had a run-in, you know? At least his time as their master would grow frustrating for him. SpongeBob, I have a confession to make. What's number one? What's number one? I'm actually curious. I don't watch SpongeBob that much, so I don't know. What's number one? War crimes? April Fools? <gasps> April you're Fools. Bald? No, I'm not bald. I'm yeah, I think alive. you're right. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe Dude, to April our Fools. channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest it's videos. It's definitely April Fools. You'll have the option to be notified for occasional videos it has or to be. all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings That's and a good switch call. on notifications. Yeah. Number one, the April Fools prank. Yeah, what did you do was... to my drink? I do. I do. You what? That's that's still very funny. The you what is extremely funny, even still. That's so funny. You asked for a couple of ice cubes in your drink, and I only put in one! <laughs> it's so Wait, funny. Word, it's time we have a chat about April Fools. The first day of April is meant to be about joking around, pulling some harmless gags, and sharing a laugh with someone. What isn't funny is publicly humiliating a person. He's already done it three times, though! And forcing them to endure serious physical pain. Yes, in the Fools in April episode, Squidward sends Spongebob flying around the Krusty Krab, smacking him into walls, <laughs> crashing through uh objects, and landing him in a filthy garbage can. <laughs> April Fools, you little sausage! <laughs> He's so sad. I mean, like, at least the crowd was on Spongebob's side here, right? In the other ones, people were laughing at Spongebob. I feel like this one isn't as bad. <laughs> Talk to anyone in the SpongeBob fan base, and they'll tell you this was the single meanest thing Squidward has ever done. And we all thought base? Plankton was the real villain. Sponge Bros. Wait, don't go. Man. You stink. Do you agree with our picks? Ah! <laughs> Holy shit! This is the top ten worst things SpongeBob did. Oh my god! Holy shit! What was that? Ugh. Watch that? No. No. I have a different movie. I have a different movie. So we now know the top ten things Squidward has done. The top ten worst things. So I found another one. I found another movie that uh, is sort of up the same alley. It's kind of in the same wheelhouse. Uh, now that we know about Squidward, it's time to find out what are the top ten soups as ranked by WatchMojo.com. Honestly, I think I'm a big fan of minestrone, chicken noodle, chicken tortilla. I love chicken tortilla. Um, uh... French onion? No. I don't like French onion. Oh, oh, oh. One no. mulligatani. Um, chicken tortilla. I love chicken tortilla. What is that right there? Is that lima bean? Yes. This dish is traditional, practical, and perfect for any culinary occasion. Borscht Welcome is probably going to be hot. And today we're counting Borscht down our will picks probably for the top 10 soups. For this list, we're focusing on beloved soups of the world. That was chicken tortilla, by the way. Chili. Because, that looks good. Well, it's not technically a soup. Oh, and no stews either. 
Number Wait, can 10. Can you do chili? Cream of mushroom. Could you do okay, chili Ms. here? Darling, the real way to get a man is with melted cheese and cream of mushroom soup. He'll is die chili at a 50, soup? But his love will be true. Not everyone enjoys a well prepared roux. It a stew? But if you do, then it only makes sense to go heavy with the cream and Ew. top it all off with some tasty mushrooms. Yeah. It grows out of the ground. No, not meat. Not meat. Example. When something is too dry, what do we do? Cream of mushroom soup. Call it what you want, Gross. but it's unlikely that you'll want to deny yourself a big old frothing bowl of I'm mushroom I'm denying fun. myself a big old frothing bowl. That's disgusting. I hate that mushrooms. Brings a smile to every appetite Meat and stuff room. off the ground. Number yeah, nine. and then it goes through their minestrone. digestion. Minestrone. Minestrone. Lovely minestrone is pog. I'm the a fan of minestrone. The ancient Romans were quite busy in their day, Minestroni's constructing nice. statues and building civilizations. But what you may not realize is they were a civilization fueled by minestrone soup. Yeah. The word essentially means to serve soup. Or to someone like Julius Caesar, it probably conjured up images of borlotti beans. Maybe not. But what? we do owe a lot to the Italians for that paving a the way borlotti for a beans simple bit? and affordable soup. One that can be your classic veggie soup, joke? whether or not you're in a classical Roman state of mind. Feel free to throw a little meat in there if you'd like. It's I would all like minestrone to us. Oh, well, dude, now I, I want some minestrone. I want soup, soup now. I would probably make me hungry. be minestrone. Keep talking. I like your honesty, so does the camera. Number eight. Borscht. Dude, Dude borscht is this beets. low? If you think beetroots are the hottest new indie band, borscht then you're bad. probably unfamiliar with the sheer mouth-wateringness that comes from looking at a well-prepared borscht counts, soup. If bisque counts, lobster bisque. Eastern That's Europeans true. love it, and lobster some bisque religions might be high. even have traditions around it. If you're a virgin to the borscht experience, then it's time to tart up your life with a little cabbage or carrots. Or whatever your favorite is vegetable is. Is this the best watch mojo narrator? She's borscht. definitely the most and common. Only the I hear her all the time. comes with culinary experience and a genuine love for a strong tart game. It's actually good. See? Oh, yeah. I would have that. Number seven, Vichyssoise. I've never heard of this. It's cold. It's Vichyssoise, sir. <laughs> it's supposed to be cold. What's Vichyssoise? She's about to tell me. I've never heard of this. For years, there has been a war of words between the Americans and the French in regard to the origins of this thick soup. Typically huh? served cold rather than hot. The only thing anyone can truly agree on is that it's delicious. It's cold what you'll need soup? when preparing Ew. a cold bowl for your significant other is just a healthy amount of pureed leeks, chicken stock, onions, potatoes, and cream. Just be okay. sure to make plenty for seconds. I will dip my ladle in your vicious walls. <laughs> Oh. Number six, it, wonton. It blows my mind that they can find all these like media references for soup. How do they find that? I guess they just search Google for Vichyssoise quote, and then it comes up. If you're a true aficionado of Chinese cuisine, then you've probably got all kinds of wonton recipes. Not a and fan of wonton. And you surely soup. understand the beauty of preparing these little dumplings with pork and shrimp. Not a but fan. But if you're a little more conservative and just desire a common soup, then why not let your local Chinese takeout do the work? No. Whatever your preference, wontons, green onions, and a delicious variety of spices will thoroughly cleanse your soul with the aid what do you of mean, steaming Cody? hot chicken broth. It's not good. Number five. Clam chowder. Oh, Chow I'm gonna throw dear. up. Chow dear. <laughs> I was literally about to say this. I was just about to do this. It's chowder. Say it right. Any Chow great dear. soup connoisseur understands the importance of a shit. few crackers in clam chowder soup. Much like one understands that oh, tomatoes should not be within its sight. No, Why? I hate clams. I hate clams. we're talking chowder here. Clams are and just tongues in a shell. The famous New England it's variation disgusting. has only the essentials. Potatoes, it's an underwater onions, tongue and clams. that comes out. They make it all brothed up Ugh. and ready to be consumed. Whether you like your chowder Cody, what light do you or... like? Chicken tortilla! Chicken tortilla, top three. Perhaps on the chunkier side. Chicken tortilla. Some may even prefer a little corn chowder I think chicken clam. noodle is number there one. There are no I do. wrong choices I think here. so. Is it cream or no cream? Is it clams or no clams? <laughs> is it parsley? Yes. Number four. <laughs> Lobster bisque. Lobster oh, bisque. Five stars. Five thumbs up. One has a variety that's, of options when preparing a creamy French bisque. That's pretty low. In terms of vegetables and fruits. 
But what about when you toss in a finely prepared crustacean? Oh. Well, that's a lobster bisque, of course. And if your soup game is on point, then you understand how one can enhance the experience by maximizing the flavor. I do. You can even grind the shell for a little more texture. Ooh. And for the best lobster bisque, it wouldn't hurt to keep it cool for a while. Wait, you can grind the shell into the bisque? Ugh. The shell becomes the soup? Why would you do that? Throw it away. Yeah, I'll pass on the shell. But we guess it all depends when and Ugh. where your desire sets in. No, no! I want this. I love crustaceans. All right, come again. Number three, what the fuck? French onion. Good, I'm glad it's low. Something a little more palatable. The French do not know soup. Rations? French onion soup they eat really snails. Nice. Did you guys know that? Appropriately French titled, people eat snails. This type of soup dates back to the 18th yes. century. This is where Mallory's it was served favorite as soup, a by soup way. for the poor. Today, however, French onion soup is and should be enjoyed it's by everyone. It's number three. After it's, all, it's below chicken noodle and chicken tortilla. One, two. Watch. A nice way to kick off any meal Watch. is with some caramelized onions, melted cheese, and a monster crouton. Nothing too fancy here, just a beautiful hot mess for your taste buds. Yuck. A gratinade treat that sets the tone for a larger helping. Gross. Even if the soup itself used to be the only helping for some. I told you this is chicken about noodles comfort. ass. You've only it's had bad chicken noodles. You know what you need to try? Campbell's. <laughs> a little uh, underground label you probably never heard of. Campbell's chicken soup, beautiful. Delicious. Mondays. There's like a you you make it and there's like a skin on the top. There's like this flaky crust that like is runny when you pick it up with your spoon. It's like a little film on top. Delicious. If you want to brighten your day. Number two, tomato. It's tomato soup. Oh, I forgot about tomato Stop. soup. I can actually feel it running down my throat. Forgot about that. Stop. Don't. As you might have guessed, this soup is made from tomatoes. True. Everyone's favorite That's fruit. That's true. Whether you like your tomato soup warm for a comfort snack. Or cold like the Spanish gazpacho. We know we what number one is. You don't have to be a Giada de hand, of the kitchen to figure this hand. one out. Of I was course, right. It was the I was right. Hey, Campbell's, there they are. Big Joseph shout out a. for them. Campbell that helped spread right. the joy of tomato soup to the right. world. And if you know right. what's good for you, you, eat it with a grilled cheese sandwich. I told you. Before I told you. we serve up a steaming hot right. bowl of our top pick, here are some honorable It's chicken mentions. noodle. It's chicken fucking noodle. It has to be. What if it's an honorable mention? I'm going to scream. Yeah, broccoli cheddar I thought would be on here, but honorable mention is fine. Ew. That's not soup. That's mashed potatoes. Nope. Give me the real thing. Number one. That's so many soups. How many soups could there be? Thank you, DeHobbler. Here you go, here you go. Number one. Oh, God, I thought that was chicken noodle. <laughs> it looked like it for a second. What if this video is like another eight minutes long? <laughs> Listing every soup? All right, come on. Number one. Chicken noodle. Oh, Somebody yes. Some soup. It is the chicken soup. Chicken noodle with some extra. The soup. soup. I'm on it. While many soups on our list may not be weekly or even monthly visitors to your dinner table, you can bet that chicken noodle soup is a pantry regular for most that of us. That kid loves Whether chicken noodle soup. Whether it be for soup. a quick snack, a comfort food, or just something to help you feel a little better when sick, Delicious. chicken noodle never fails. Mm. With such a simple base, mm. chicken and broth, there are so many ways to fancy things So up. many ways like to fancy things up. by adding dumplings, pasta, rice, or spices. Just don't go overboard. It may be a so mainstay, many ways, dude. but it's a mainstay for a reason. Gene, take this chicken noodle soup to table five. On dude, it. do you? I bet it wasn't even hard to get chicken noodle soup, like at, at, having clips in movies and TV. Delicious. Agree with our list? Oh, I do yes. agree with your list. What's yeah. your favorite tasty soup? Chicken for noodle. More delicious. Top Is that popcorn? Our list? Oh yes. What's your favorite? What the fuck is this? Is that popcorn? <laughs> is th that's popcorn, right? Tasty soup. Is that popcorn in tomato soup? Cream of crab? Is that crab? No, that's not crab. That's not crab meat, right? Hard disagree with the list. 
Sorry, Bucko. For more delicious top tens, list is final. Day. Be sure to subscribe. What the fuck are they doing? What are they putting in the soup? Dear favorite tasty soup. For more delicious top tens, published. Oh, goldfish. That's delicious. Every day. Be sure Probably. to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. What is the soup du jour? It's the soup of the day. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. I'll have that. Very funny. Very funny indeed. Man. Okay. So now that we know what the top 10 soups are, and I was right. I did predict them. I told you that I would. One more list for you. Unless they have some new ones. Hold on. Let me see if they have new ones. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Top 10 most ridiculous knockoff restaurants. Dominic's Pizza. Donkey Donuts. I kind of want to watch that. I kind of want to watch this one. This was not what it was, but I kind of want to sneak that one in there. Top 10 movie twist that ruined everything. I kind of like that one. All right, we'll do that. We'll do that one. Hold on. Iconic One Piece moments. Ugh. Okay. All right. All right. We'll do this one. They got the golden arches. And then, and then we got one more after. What? Mine is the oh, we did that arcs. one. Okay. Welcome to Watch Mojo. One more. Today, this is a bonus list. We're counting down our picks. A for bonus the top list, 10 just for you. Knockoff restaurants. If you like good food, good fun, and a whole lot of crazy crap on the walls, then come on down to Uncle Mo's Family Feed Bag. It's always money in a banana stand. Atomic sub, why are you eating there? I get a card, and they stamp it every time I buy a sub. 24 stamps. Why am I watching these clips? Submarine? Captain. For this list, we're looking at restaurants that have clearly taken their name or likeness from another more popular eating establishment. Star Chucks. Do you have a favorite off-brand restaurant? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, Five Lads, <laughs> Five Guys. Oh, that's all right, lad. Given how five... That's the clip? The clip is just Willie saying... I can't. Watch Mojo is so funny. Name across the globe. It's not a stretch to see where this knockoff gets its inspiration. In the UK, a Five Lads brand of restaurants can be found. Well... As far as knockoffs go, this one seems pretty legit. The change yeah. in name is kind of hilarious when you think about that it. That doesn't seem and that their bad. Menu seems to this is just Nando's. This is fucking Nando's, but they named it after burgers. Offer some classic staples, what? including burgers, wraps, and wings. One that looks nice, of course. And not too expensive. I love Nando's, yes. by the way. Nando's Their is focus, delicious. however, is a little more concentrated on chicken as opposed to Five Guys, which offers more options for beef. It's not the most blatant copycat we'll find on this no, list. No, it's not. But it is certainly a close call. No, it's not. Number it's nine, fine. Dominic's Pizza. Domino's Pizza. Well, one of the most common ways a brand can be ripped off is let through me see the, the mimicking logo. of its logo or using a name that's very similar well, to the original. Hold on. Let me see the Domino's logo. Domino's Pizza is a prime example of using both of these techniques to trick customers. Let me see the I'm logo. Sorry. My name's Dominic. They use a color scheme and... Okay. Uh, uh, all right. I'm with you. Lay out in all right, logo, Dominic. It's nearly identical I don't know how I feel. Well, they do sell other things. Kebabs, burgers, southern fried chicken. It's not that bad. And you know, only a couple of letters difference in the name. I don't think I'd be, be making mistake that mistake for the real deal. Don't let clever advertising fool you. The Noid does not endorse this one. Bro, they sell pizza, pasta, and pizza. Wow. Everything. I guess they got rid of the southern fried chicken and kebabs. You can taste the quality from Domino's Pizza. So avoid the Noid. <laughs> Number eight, Sunny Day, Subway. Unlike other entries what? on this list, the name of this knockoff doesn't immediately give away who they're trying to impersonate. No. Oh, what a beautiful sunny day. It's not until you see the yellow and white ah. lettering across the green background that it becomes clear. Located mm. in Yemen, this subway copycat could definitely fool some. Okay. The signage yeah. is cute, but certainly reeks of the American sub giant. Who's not reading it, though? They keep saying this is going to fool people. Who's going to see that and be like, bro, subway? There's actually a place near my house. Hold on. Let me see if I can find it. There's a restaurant. There's a restaurant near my house. Uh, it's like 30 minutes away. It's in Laurel. The restaurant is called Wenny's. With the W and everything. 
It's very funny. It's very funny. If you, like, when you look at it, when you see it, when you're driving through Laurel, it's so funny. It looks just like it. <laughs> it's pretty funny. And they're, they are famous. Yeah, their food is famous. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. It's so funny. <laughs> I love that. I wonder, maybe they're on the list. One thing that makes me a little bit happy. This fresh, delicious, tasty, meaty, turkey-filled, cold-cut combo. Even the burger ads in the window use a similar color scheme. However, given that Subway sells subs and not burgers, they may want to consider changing their posters if they're trying to attract And Subway is Subway fucking customers. disgusting. So. Number seven, Pizza Hat. Pizza <laughs> Hut. Have you ever noticed that the upper portion of the Pizza Hut logo actually looks like a hat? A little well, bit. This copy I have noticed that. Certainly did. And they have capitalized on it. <laughs> no one has Man. Bellas, are you tired of watching a streamer that doesn't even own a <laughs> oh, stapler? Follow me at come on. It's Zony Time. I know that exists. I know Twitch. I know there's somebody named Zony. I'm positive that person exists. Have I, I told you guys the story of the other Coney in uh in PM, right? I'll tell you after. Remind me after all this. It's very funny. It's very funny. I'll tell you after this whole thing. After these, yeah, this watch mojo. Pizza hat. This chain of pizza parlors has taken the original logo, but instead of the little red hut, there is now a man wearing a fedora style hat. Maybe it's good. Copy the font and the name, with the exception of that one U turned into an A, and you've got yourself the perfect recipe for. I actually dog. would get tricked Seeing by this. They both sell pizza. I actually would get tricked. I was laughing at the sun, really sunny day one. I would get tricked by that. Chain. I think. Number six, KKFC. KFC. What do KKFC, uh, ALG, and KFG all have in common? Yes, they all start with the letter K, but they're also all knockoffs of Colonel Sanders' famous chicken restaurants. The man makes a pretty strong bird. KKFC, or crispy, crunchy fried chicken, is a <laughs> Nepal-based fried chicken chain that was clearly inspired by America's famous Kentucky inspired, fried chicken. Inspired, yeah. A quick glance at their menu, and you would swear you're looking at one from KFC. Buckets of chicken, chicken burgers, and sandwiches. That's fu- Bro! $1,000?! How good is this chicken? $2,700 for this. Popcorn chicken and even boxed meals all look strikingly That better be good chicken. American that shit better be crunchy. The only notable difference here is the chicken in the logo versus Sanders' It's Nepal? Cake. I know! You have and to travel to go get it! Of course. Even more expensive. Added one extra K. Number five. Sunbucks. Starbucks coffee and others. How many? Starbucks. While Pressure Drop Brewing offers a coffee cream porter beer called Buckstar, Buckstar is kind of fun. Highly doubtful That's anyone would mistake this alcoholic drink for any coffee from Starbucks. There exist many, many other restaurant knockoffs with more blatant names, logos, and so on, inspired by the Seattle coffee chain, though. Some examples include Shanghai Starbucks, which simply adds the city it's located in in front of the original name, while Sunbucks Coffee, <laughs> also in Shanghai, uses a white and green logo, but okay. replaces the American company's mermaid with a Chinese dragon. Yeah. Then there's London Starbucks Coffee, which reportedly earned Starbucks wrath due to its name. Really? But that's where the similarities end. Meanwhile, that doesn't look that bad. Starbucks's logo Okay, that blue, does look bad. But that's just different. Just take a look at it for yourselves. Never Number mind. four, McDonald's Pide. McDonald's. Given the popularity of a brand like McDonald's, McDonald's it's a no-brainer that copies would appear here and there. I don't like even, even the saying coming that. Coming to America, starring Eddie Murphy, had a little fun with it. They're McDonald's. I'm McDonald's. In the real world, however, there have been plenty of imitators out there. <laughs> One prime example is the McDonald's restaurants found McDonald's. in some parts of Europe, such as Poland and Turkey. The resemblance to the original varies depending on the individual spot. Wow! Whereas some Okay, but they're not serving McDonald's food. What the fuck is this food? What is this? Cheese bread? Why does all Turkish food look like this? It's like all like bloated baked potatoes. Ugh. Whereas some only mimic the name, Disgusting. others have gone so far as to replicate the famous golden arches. If McDinner wasn't original enough for you, how about Mash McDonald's? Donald's? I see they got the Big Mac, I got the Big Mick. Number three, Burger Friends, mm. Burger King. Found in Baghdad, that sounds Burger yummy. Friends is clearly taking aim at copying the Burger King brand. 
this burger house uses a logo <laughs> that is virtually identical to the original. That the looks good. Moral, red text. I might want to go to Burger bun. Friends, bro. There's no mistaking what name they're trying to take. I'm going to show you who the real king is, Joe. This, of course, isn't the only instance of imitation. Cheeseburger? There is no... There is no claim being made here of being the king or friends of anybody. It's just this is what we sell. Cheese burger. <laughs> you bet if you ask for a hamburger, you're getting kicked out of the window. Take this example. Go to Cheeseburger. China, which simply prints the title Cheeseburger across a logo that That's is good. otherwise That's Burger good. King's. This doesn't seem to be Australia's Hungry Jack situation either, where the name Burger King simply wasn't available, and it actually is a franchise of Burger King. Yeah, so Hungry Jack's, uh, Lunk, if you're here, I will tell you the story for you. This has come up on the stream before, but in case, you know, you're new. So, apparently, hi, Lunk. Okay, Lunk is here. Apparently, Lunk is from Australia. He could tell me if I'm wrong. Apparently, what happened with Hungry Jack is Burger King tried to expand into Australia, okay? The problem is there was a guy that owned one restaurant called Burger King, and that's it. And Burger King offered him amounts, amounts of money for the name. They just wanted the name Burger King so bad. And this guy said, no, fuck off. And Burger King was like, please, let us call ourselves Burger King. We'll give you any amount of money. And the guy said, no, fuck off. And then the guy died. So Burger King will never have it. And now they are Hungry Jacks forever. That's it. That's the whole story. And in Australia, they are now Hungry Jacks, and they can't ever change it because that guy died with the Burger King name. Oh, they finally got it a few years ago, but now they're stuck with their brand. Yeah, now they ha now they can't change it because Australia doesn't know who Burger King is. Australia is fucking kooky. I don't know. It's so funny. I love it. I fucking love Australia, dude. Although it's Favorite difficult country, to stay for sure. mad at a place with the word friends. I love name, that place. We're on to you guys. We know this isn't the real deal. You cannot ask me to betray my king. I have sworn an oath. Number two, Dairy King, <laughs> Dairy Queen. I mean, it In is a world of ice cream you know, monarchies. Dairy that's like a step up, right? Supreme since the mid 20th century. They've spread from their Kings humble above origins the queen, in Illinois so... and expanded across the globe with approximately 6,800 stores worldwide. I'll give it up. With kings and queens often being associated in pairs, it seems inevitable that someone Is would open like a, a Dairy, Dairy Jack? King restaurant. Surprisingly, they're found in several locations across the U.S. and presumably rely on the spin of their name to draw in customers. I mean, things could be worse. How about Dairy Fairy? Ice cream does taste magical after all. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe okay, to our channel what's number and one? ring the bell to get notified about our latest video. I would not eat at a place called Dairy Joker. I would never consume anything from a place named Dairy Joker. That sounds like a recipe for disaster. That sounds like a very bad idea. Videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, <laughs> make sure you go into Sunday. your settings and switch on notifications. <laughs> Number one, donkey donuts. I've, donkey donuts. donuts. Yep, yep. You're donkey donuts. Looking for an afternoon yep. treat and have a hankering for a donut. Driving down the road, you spot a pink and blue sign with two letter D's on it and assume you found a Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> Don't be too sure. This copycat found in Germany mm. leverages a similar name and color scheme as the original. Kind of. customers into believing they've found a classic Dunkin' Donuts. It's clearly intentional given bad. the design, but the use of the word donkey with donuts just, yeah, that doesn't sound right. Those two, Woo! yeah, are cooking like donkeys. Come on, donkey's kitchen. Oddly enough, there's actually a real- Donkey's kitchen? Why did he say that? Donkey's kitchen? Why is that so funny to me? It's a Shrek reference. Oh, got you. Okay. Real Donkey Donuts company that makes when he donuts made waffles. specifically yeah. for your horses. But they only... That woman is kissing her horse? You guys don't kiss your horses? This is normal. You guys don't do this? This is like what you're supposed to do. That's how they get love and affection. I do. Yeah, cool dad, red mom. See? Oh, do you guys not own horses? I forgot you're poor. Yeah. 
No, if you guys don't own horses, I guess I could see why this would be weird. Because you don't know what they need. They need love and affection. Like, for like four hours a day. Real Donkey Donuts company that makes donuts specifically for your you horses. But they only sell their goods online, so don't go bringing your horses to coffee shops, okay? Do you agree with our pick? Not bad. Not bad. Pretty good movie. I would definitely get tricked by Pizza Hat. That's probably the only one. Pizza Hat is pretty good. <laughs> but that's it. That's the only one I get tricked by. All right. One more movie. One more. Not for the night. We got more coming up. One more Watch Mojo. Guys. <laughs> now this one might need a pivot. This one might need a pivot. I don't know what this is going to be like. Yeah. <laughs> oh, other wait, story. Wait, that horse picture Dude, yeah. is edited. Some weirdo pulled the horse's mouth open so it's an open mouth kiss. No, horses love open mouth kissing. No, that's not edited. They just love that. So the other Coney story. Okay, let me tell you really quick. Let me tell you. So this happened in PM, okay? Uh, I was I was playing PM in Smash, and I was like, like one of the best Wario players. I was like number one, number two, whatever. I'm not saying this to brag. I'm just saying this. I was established, okay? So my name was Coney, right? And I'm one of the best Wario players. On Smash boards, there was a thread from a guy. Hold on. Let me see if I can find it. Let me find it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hold on. Hold on. This is so funny. I don't know how much he posts, though. Here! <laughs> okay. So, I was a Wario player, okay? And my name was Coney on Smashboards. And then, one day on Smashboards on the Wario board, this guy shows up. Cone Z. I thought this was a joke. I thought this was a bit. Because I use the Z sometimes, like Coney Z, you know, what I, you know what I mean? He's like, okay, I'm Cone Z, whatever, whatever. And I saw this, I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> this was the weirdest thing I've ever seen. And then later, people in this thread are like, do you know who Coney is? Like, is this a joke? He's like, I have no idea who that is. Like, I have no idea who that person is. I have no idea who Cody is. I was like, what? You can see it right here. Look at the... Yeah, look. I'm Cone Z, but my act actual tag is just Z. Welcome to the wonderful world of Wario. Thank you. Last thing I wanted to add. Blah, blah, blah. Georgia, huh? Blah, blah, blah. Mr. Pickle. He was a really good player in uh in Tennessee. All right, thanks, thanks, blah, 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 me. What the fuck? <laughs> XD. It came up on another thing. I think it was another thread where I was like, I know it looks like he knew, but I think there was another thread where I was like, how did you come up with that name? He's like, I had no idea that you existed. It was crazy. Apparently, he didn't know. And he posted for a while after, so. Okay. One more movie in React Mojo. Then we're done. Okay? So, we've seen the top 10 worst things Squidward has done. We've seen the top 10 soups. But now it's time to finish off the trifecta. The trilogy. With the top 10 greatest zoo animal escapes. I am... I am very excited for this one. <laughs> I really want to know how these animals got out. I hope nobody got hurt. 
from the daring to the dangerous and the deadly. I want to see oh, deadly. Wait. Welcome Better to Watch not be Mojo. Toss. And today we're counting down All our of picks them for are the birds. top ten zoo escapes for this list. Number ten, the parrot. The parrot flew out of the pen. Number nine, the macaw. The macaw flew out of the pen. Number eight, the cockatoo. We're looking at some of the famous examples of animals breaking free from their enclosures <laughs> and setting out into the big wide world. That's funny. A fugitive no! penguin that's been on the run for 82 days. It would be a shame if you didn't register the pony no. name as a trademark. No. I'm getting the LLC. Rusty the Red Panda. I'm going to do it. We start in Washington, D.C. I don't know. Adventurous Red Panda red caused is really a social stupid. media storm in June 2013. Rusty, who was 11 months old at the time, had recently been oh. moved to the Smithsonian National Zoo when he boldly broke out and spent the day exploring the city. Though red pandas are naturally territorial oh. animals, this maverick marched almost a mile away from his usual home until he was eventually spotted a short distance from the zoo gates. Dude, what would you do if you're walking down fucking Washington, D.C., some super urban area, and you saw a red panda? That's a Disney movie. Wait, I think it actually is, isn't it? Aren't they making that? There's like a girl that turns into one? Dubbed the People's Something Panda like after the extensive effort on Twitter to locate literally a movie. Rusty had settled down to start a family by the following summer. His rebellious youth, however, will never be forgotten. Wait, by the following summer? He was 11... How, how old are pandas when they start reproducing? He was 11 months... Like, two years? Is that all it takes? I guess two years. Holy shit, that's crazy. Number nine, Goldie the Eagle. 1960s Britain may be best remembered for Beatlemania, but for two winter weeks in 1965, the limelight fell elsewhere. <laughs> Goldie the Golden Eagle evaded his London zoo handlers in late February. This is also a movie, taking by up the a way. temporary residence in this is the rescuers Regent's down Park under. Until mid -March. The majestic predator was a national celebrity as crowds appeared every day to see the bird stretch its wings. Every day. His two weeks on the run were even mentioned in Parliament, getting a cheer during a debate in the House of Commons. Goldie was eventually recaptured, only to flee his nest once more in December of the same year, before his appetite for the outside world was finally satisfied. Britain is Number so Number eight, weird. the Tokyo Sea Life Park Penguin. No way! One of the early 21st century's longest and most successful Fugitive penguin finally captured. Thank for God. Freedom. Penguin number 337 from the Tokyo Sea Life Park eluded its captors for 82 days in 2012. 82 Having days? Having jumped a rock more than twice its height before finding a small gap in the aquarium's parameter fence, the Humboldt penguin found fame by making various appearances throughout the Japanese capital, including what did he frequent eat? trips to Tokyo Bay. On one occasion, it even outran the Japanese Coast Guard. <laughs> the bird's keepers had been concerned that it would not survive the city, but gave it a clean bill of health upon its return. Japan sucks. You can't even catch a penguin? Man. A penguin outran the Coast Guard. I guess this <laughs> Dude, I don't... Man. This one little penguin shit on all of Japan. With ample food supply That's in the surrounding so waters, it had clearly been dining in style. Number seven, Chuba the macaw. Yeah, he got to away. Canada he next, flew away. And some clipped They're all birds. Simply refused to be stopped. Chuba the macaw was a resident at Vancouver Zoo in 2009 when she up and left by way of RV. Unable to fly for long she distances, drove? she somehow fluttered from her enclosure and hopped into a hidden compartment of a nearby family vehicle, where she stayed for three days until she was discovered. The, the distinctive blue and gold bird had nestled up close to the engine, having hitched a ride for over 20 miles. Oh my her god. Her story proved a media sensation, but her exact Wait. means of escape remains a mystery. The bird drove for 20 miles over three days? Hi. You could literally punt the little dorkers or I'd like a football. Yeah. Fucking penguin. Yeah, I could just pick up. Dude, you could pick up the penguin and just launch him. It'd be so easy to do. Wait, so the penguin only got 20 miles away over three days? The bird didn't drive. I know. <laughs> Number six. I absolutely could catch a penguin unless we're in the Arctic. I could catch a penguin very quickly. It'd be very easy for me to catch a penguin. 
If that situation ever comes up in my life, I'm going to stream it. Valerio the Jaguar. Sadly, not every escape story is a lighthearted one. On July 14, 2018, oh no. a three-year-old male jaguar broke out of his enclosure at the Audubon Zoo in New Orleans. He had bitten through a steel fence along the roof of his enclosure, enough to create a small hole for him to escape. Oh no. Fortunately, the zoo was closed to the public at the time, so no humans were harmed. Phew. The same unfortunately cannot be said for other animals at the zoo, as five alpacas, three foxes, and an emu were all killed by Valerio oh my before God! officials were able to tranquilize and secure him. He was unfortunately doing what jaguars do. Uh, our focus is going to be getting through grieving, making sure that his enclosure is uh, repaired and moving forward. Bro, imagine being that fucking emu. I would be so mad. You've spent your entire life in the emu enclosure and then a fucking jaguar comes in and you're like, what the fuck? What is this? What is his problem? Who let him in? I've never even seen another animal. I'd be angry as hell, dude. Thankfully, the zoo opted not to euthanize Valerio, and he was returned to his enclosure in February 2019, albeit with some reinforced fencing. I'd be mad. Where's my team? Bro, come on. Where's my fucking team? Five, the Zanesville incident. 911. Yeah, there's a lion on Mount. Oh, God, the, the, the incident. <laughs> TF. Perry Raid and Gray Shot. I'm pretty sure, and I just saw a wolf. <laughs> I think I just seen one. It was like a jaguar or a wolf or something. The Midwest town of Zanesville, oh, Ohio, God. was the scene of carnage on the night of October 18th, 2011, when Terry Thompson, a collector of exotic animals, recklessly set big cats, bears, wolves, and monkeys free. His actions prompted a massive police operation oh to my hunt God. and kill or capture the escapees, all of which sadly posed a huge risk to the public. International news channels aired images of the devastation the next morning. The story brought global criticism to this the This is like a Far Cry lawmakers. quest. Number four. The Holy shit, dude. He just released all the beasts at once? Oh my God. That sounds like a side quest. Yeah, you gotta get them all. This incident in particular was really Zaneo Megalalo 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 Megalal. Actually, I had a similar thing. So I have a husky. I don't know if you guys have seen him. I own a husky, and it kind of looks like a wolf if you see him from far away, but he's small. He's a tiny husky. And uh, once he got off leash, and he ran over to a shopping center near where we live, and people, like called people for it like animal control and eventually we did find him show him hold on one second he doesn't look like a wolf if you see him straight up it's only if you see him uh <laughs> okay here he is as a baby okay this is a very cute picture he was a baby here it does not look particularly but here he is he looks more foxy here this is baby Todd. This is him as a baby. He's very little here. Very cute. But he's a he's a small husky. He's a tiny husky. Uh but yeah, he he got some people called and we found him. There's a horse place near us, like a horse saddlery. Isn't that so funny? There's a lot of horse posting tonight. Um there is a horse place near us and uh he went up to there and was like hanging out with people. Because he loves people. You guys want to see the other dog. Hold on. Oh, here's Todd also. I don't share this picture on social media because people get weird about it. But uh, here's him sleeping. That's him. Uh, I'm trying to find Banjo. I have two dogs. One is husky, one is half husky, half lab. That guy is apparently full husky. <laughs> this is... <laughs> I, I have a video, but I don't think I should show you this. Uh, Here's Banjo. I'm, it's just because his butt is in the video. Just... 
I don't know what he's doing here. <laughs> I, I don't know why he's acting so weird. This is Banjo. He's very sweet. He's wearing a bark collar because he's very loud when people come to the door and the baby was sleeping. That's Banjo. He's very cute. Good boy. Good boy, Banjo. Okay. Is this the one that shits when he's excited? Not when he's excited, when he's scared. When people come to the door, he poops himself. He's sort of gotten a handle on that, but not totally. San Francisco. Show us dogs on stream now. I could go get them if you guys want. I'll get them later. Oh, tiger attacks. The San Francisco Zoo was closing up after on this Christmas movie. Day 2007 when it played host to a terrifying escape. Tatiana, a four-year-old female Siberian tiger who had previously him, mauled a keeper, was at the center of the incident, which resulted in the death of a visitor oh, and God. the killing of the animal itself. Ooh. As you can imagine, it caused quite the controversy. I bet. The investigation suggested that Tatiana may have been taunted before she seemingly leapt from her enclosure, while the San Fran Zoo came under fire for falling short Sensitive of some tiger. industry standards. Can't Two take a little taunting. Patrons were injured in the 13-minute attack, which Thin some experts say tiger. was a disaster that could have been avoided. The San Francisco Zoo escape was an anomaly. Nothing like it. Are they all going to be sad from before. here? That's what I'm wondering. Are these Number all going to be bad? The Huntsrick kangaroos. <laughs> for this, <laughs> dude, the fun music started back up. Sentry, it's time for a little teamwork. When three kangaroos embarked on a Hollywood-style so escape from Hoke Wildschutz Park, Hunsrück, near Frankfurt in Germany, oh my God. they enlisted help from the outside. The Nothing trio bypassed two external well, fences, true, not true. by jumping over them, as might be expected of their bouncing breed, but by tunneling underneath, using holes dug first by a fox and then by a wild boar. The interspecies <laughs> effort inspired headlines all <laughs> over the world, with readers marveling at the marsupial's cunning. That's a Two movie. Of the burrowers were quickly caught. The other continually evaded its pursuit. That's a movie. Meanwhile, That's the a fox good and boar accomplices disappeared without a trace. Number two, Cyril the sea lion. Coney, you ever see the video of someone punching a cam kangaroo because it had its dog? Yeah, dude. Kangaroos snap necks. They're fucked. They grab necks and like they are. They are scary. Yes, you have to. If a kangaroo has your dog. You have to fight it. Literally Kangaroo Jack. No, I he doesn't do that in the movie. He does not do that in the movie. <laughs> Kangaroo Jack does not snap anybody's neck in the movie. He raps. I think he raps. The earliest example of animal escapology to make today's list, Cyril the sea lion made waves on both sides of the North American border in He's a 1958 rapping kangaroo. when he escaped from a small pool in London, Ontario. Cyril slipped away from Storybook Garden Aww. Zoo and swam some very risky waters, including military-occupied Lake Erie, oh, until God. he was eventually found in a different country altogether, by a boathouse in Ohio. Nearby for him. Zoo took the creature in, and after some slightly tense negotiations, agreed to return him to his former home. Tense negotiations? For what? 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 Like, what were? What was the bargaining chip? What were they trying to hold him for? To mark the occasion, the Chicago Tribune led with quote. Toledo yields dopey sea lion, but there was little dopey, dopey about Cyril's awesome escapades. Before we unveil our number dopey? one pick, here are some honorable mentions. <laughs> That's a sad gorilla. <laughs> they're all gorillas. Yeah, gorillas aren't really great escapes because they're so smart. It's not, it's not like impressive, you know? They could just get out. They're like people. They're not even telling me how they got away. It's just naming the animal. Bronx Zoo Cobra. Oh, God. Before we continue, what's sure number to one? To our channel number and one, bell to Madagascar. About our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, I have make sure no you idea. go into your settings and switch on notifications. I have no idea. 
Number one, Fu Manchu, the orangutan. When it comes to escaping, orangutans are extraordinarily good at it. Yeah. In 1985, one Ken Allen became a superstar at the San Diego Zoo following three successful escapes in as many months. Oh my God. In fact, Ken was so good at getting out that other apes began copying him. But today's winner is Fu Manchu, a tricksy resident at Omaha Zoo in the late 60s. Fu frequently busted his family out of their enclosures by <laughs> reportedly hiding some wire under his lip, which he used to pick the locks on the gate. What? He was so skilled at breaking free, he was even awarded honorary membership to the American Association of Locksmiths. What the fuck? I fucking hate monkeys so much. He can pick locks multiple times? That's not so cool. What do you mean that's so cool? That's so scary, dude. That's not... I hate monkeys so much, dude. That's so scary. He understands the concept of locks, and he knows that he can get through it with a wire by somehow snap... Uh, dude, that's insane. That's fucking crazy. He's going to pick the lock at your house. Yeah, now I'm fucked! I doxed myself, and now the fucking monkey's gonna come get me. I can't talk so much shit. I love Fu Manchu. He's so smart. I love Fu Manchu. What a smart monkey. What a smart monkey. Truly. That is an intelligent monkey. Truly. <laughs> what a smart guy. <laughs> Random chimp event. Highly likely. My annual orangutan is going to come sooner than I think. Man. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. Coney, do you want animals to be dumb? Literally, yes. I don't want smart animals ever. That's a bad idea. Like, I, I don't know why you think we should have smart animals. Like, I... Wait, what is... Wait. I think there's another one. I think I want to watch one more bonus. Top 10 social events gone wrong. Wait. This is going to have the Tumblr con. Wait. This is going to have the ball pit. Dash con. That was it. All right. Bonus, bonus, one more, one more. You Maybe they can watch Mojo this into two movies. We'll see. Dude, I love these. I love stories of disaster like this. All right, one more. Top 10 social events gone wrong. Bonus, bonus video. You are going to make this worse if you start it stealing bad days. Welcome to Watch Mojo. I love and stories like these. I love these. Our picks for no, the not Barney! Gone wrong. No! They decided it would be better if they banned me from their event oh, for life. No. <laughs> they can't come through. Two million said they'd be there. 200 made it to the gate. Hours before kickoff, people had already started to gather. And through the afternoon, Wembley Way continued to oh, fill up. Man. For this list, we're looking at disastrous planned events from parties to parades, tournaments to festivals, and more. Let us know in the comments which event you'd be brave enough to attend. <laughs> uh. Number 10, Adrian Lopez's birthday party. What the fuck? Right, we just showed up to Adrian's kickback. Let's see how it is. What? Who's Adrian Lopez? Bro, what's going on at this birthday party? When California teen Adrian Lopez made a digital flyer for his birthday party in May 2021, nobody expected it to become the must-attend event of the year. Wh but when one of his friends posted information about Adrian's kickback on TikTok, the bash took off exponentially. It grabbed the attention of tons of users what online. The fuck? People from all over the country saying they were traveling here for the weekend so they could party. The party gained the attention of various social what? media personalities. Adrian tried his best to try and get an actual venue to keep things contained. Unfortunately, the party still descended into chaos. This was during COVID? When was this? I never heard of this. Some kid just tried to have a birthday party and the whole world showed up? When Huntington Beach police attempted the to disperse fuck? the large crowd, some of whom were being unruly, the crowd pushed back, setting off fireworks, tagging buildings, and destroying property. 
Police arrested 149 people for vandalism, illegal use of fireworks, and curfew violations. This Bro, that rules! What a cool birthday! Scenes were likened by many to a riot. However, lots of partygoers <laughs> reportedly had a good night. What Number the fuck? Nine, storming Area 51. In Man. 2019, an unusual Facebook event went viral. Over 2 million people agreed to attend the Storm no. Area 51 We knew event. this wasn't happening. 20-year-old Maddie Roberts started a Facebook event so to storm the Air Force base, and 3 million people have RSVP. The Air Force also responded, saying it stands ready to protect America and its assets. Its assets? Like alien corpses? The attendees hope to find out the truth about whether the top secret facility is hiding evidence of aliens. I'm sure there'll be a lot of just, look at that, did you see that, wait. But despite the large numbers of people promising they'd attend and confront the Air Force, very few people actually turned up. The alien stock and Area 51 base camp festivals held in Rachel and Heiko, Nevada, both had an extremely low turnout. It's more about a, a gathering of <sighs> like-minded people having fun like sharing minded. stories and hopefully seeing some of those ufos they see out here all the time storm area 51 was a resounding disappointment especially since it didn't even come close to proving whether aliens exist fortunately no would-be trespassers were hurt by authorities for trying to break in i mean like what is the i feel like some people there were really mad about it there's got to be one or two people that were there that were, like, legit furious that people didn't show up, right? Like, they took it really serious, you know? We're talking about 2,000 people who flooded into Nevada after a call on Facebook to storm Area 51. About 200 of them have made it to the main gate, but that obviously a much smaller number than the nearly 2 million who had pledged to raid the U.S. Air Those facility. two literally got number arrested. Eight. That's probably true. Barney goes no, not Barney! As beloved no. as New York's annual Macy's Day Parade oh, is, no. it's not the best event to put on when the city is being battered by strong winds. This is so Barney sad. Barney the Dinosaur learned that this the hard so way sad. way back in 1997. This is this so sad. This stupendous balloon is furnished by the folks at Lyric Studios. Of course, unfortunately, Barney had to succumb, succumb to the winds as well. This is on tape. Balloon Barney Barney's fourth great adventure down Broadway. Although the weather had been windy before the Poor event, guy. that didn't change anybody's mind about the parade. His friendly float met a catastrophic end after being blown into a sharp lamppost. Oh, Barney. Oh, no. He got gutted. Oh, no, Barney! The humanity. Barney Holy was shit. ripped apart after people lost control of his balloon in a dramatic scene captured forever on camera. When it was finally uploaded to YouTube decades on, his grisly demise was immortalized on the internet. That's so Number sad. Number seven, Jaguar at the Olympics. What? Much of the Amazon rainforest is located within Brazil. Event organizers wanted to bring the rainforest and its uh, many exotic species to represent the country at the 2016 Olympic Games in Rio. Oh that no. led somebody to have the bright idea of bringing a jaguar to sit by during the torch relay. Why? Unfortunately, the animal ended up escaping. To make matters worse, although the jaguar was found and tranquilized, the trigger-happy soldier ended up fatally shooting the big cat. These actions got the organizers in hot water with yeah. many animal rights campaigners. The people responsible were forced to apologize for the error of judgment of bringing a wild animal to a public event. What the fuck? They tranquilized it and then shot him? For what? <laughs> Number six, TanaCon. That's, In 2018, okay. YouTuber Tana Mojo felt like she'd been dissed by the organizers of VidCon the biggest convention for online celebrities. I will not even begin to explain to you the devastation that I felt. In my career, that is definitely top five, top three even, devastating moments. So she decided to host a rival event. She called it TanaCon and used her fame and connections to create a line of incredibly famous internet personalities. Names like Shane Dawson and mm -hmm. Gabby Hanna were supposedly going to attend, but TanaCon was a disaster from the beginning. It was a joke. Like, it was like, 
there was no booths. There was no nothing to do. There was like no real food or water. Everybody's just standing around. It was incredibly disorganized, with tickets being drastically oversold to a venue that wasn't big enough for I mean, everybody. It who? just was like a lot of empty promises, and then it got canceled afterwards. So I know that empty that promises were, for like, what? Really upset that they wasted thousands of dollars to go to this event. People were lining up in the street in the. What the fuck? All these people? Why would you ever go to a con for one person? It was huge? Why? How fucking deluded do you have to be to hold a whole con for one fucking person? That's so weird to me. They got influenced. I yeah, actually, the power of influence, that's true. Thank you, Sid Tess, you for the prime, by the way. <laughs> Coney Con. What would Coney Con even be? What would that even... I I'm gonna book a room, like a big room, and put nothing in it. It's just gonna be a big warehouse, and you guys can figure out whatever you wanna do. I'm not going. <laughs> I'm gonna book a room in, like, Sandusky, Ohio, and you all go... And I'm not going. <laughs> you all can watch me on stream at the same time. I'll set up a big projector, but I'm still going to stream from my house. But everybody can be in the same room and laugh together. <laughs> That'd be kind of funny, actually. <laughs> Make a really shitty joke. <laughs> the whole room light. <laughs> all right, that actually sounds like a funny idea. I kind of like that, actually. That sounds funny. I kind of like that. Yeah, that actually, this sounds kind of funny. Okay. The LA Sun for hours. I like that. Without proper access to water. <laughs> and all the guests needed to be refunded as they pulled yeah, out Yeah, you guys would have one. to coordinate it. Number I five, have no say in it. Euros 2020 final. Wembley Way looked like this. Thousands and thousands of fans. Far more than the number of police or the number of security guards. Yeah, Europeans That's are subhuman. That's normal for a big game. Yeah. But it's a factor in understanding... What was the you follow. cannot the hold European soccer in Europe. Was plagued with issues. They go crazy. Not only did it have to be delayed for a year, but much of the tournament was marred by bad behavior. This not came bad to a head behavior. In the final between England and Italy played in Wembley Stadium in London. Rowdy England fans who hadn't been able to get the tickets decided to storm the stadium to watch the game. With stewards overwhelmed and the police absent, others appeared to take the law into their own hands. <laughs> oh One of them even took the seat of the Italian coach's young son. The resulting violence on the day of the final was appalling and shocked the world watching. Why couldn't Area 51 be like this? This is what happens when you don't score no fucking goals. It's not clear why the stadium didn't have adequate security that day, but the vast majority of people within and without the UK definitely Dude. condemned the scene. You know, I wouldn't take my boy to a game like that, and I won't be taking him to an England game for a very long time. Number four, stranded at Tomorrow World. My interpretation of the key of happiness would have to be spending time with others, sharing space and experience. Dashcon better be number one. A little one. bit of chaos at a music festival is to be expected, but things got way too out of control at Tomorrow World in 2015. This event took place over a September weekend in Georgia, where there was so much rain that the roads and campgrounds dissolved into mud. Oh the my poor God. The weather led to the cancellation of lots of transport. This, in turn, left plenty of people stranded outside of Atlanta because everybody who wasn't camping on site was refused entry. Since many had no way to home, there were people who had to spend the night in the woods or by the side of the road without shelter. Oh, they had zero shit. transportation. The whole place was covered in mud. And like I said, they shut down 75% of their parking. We paid for mm -hmm. on-site parking, which we did not get. Oh, Number my three. God, dude. Gen that's it? That's how it ends? People just slept on the side of the road and that's it? That's a good horror game setting. That's a good point. Yeah, that sounds sick. Under reveal wildfire. It's so heartbreaking. You just pray something like this doesn't happen. Over the last decade or so, gender reveal parties have started to incorporate elaborate firework displays designed to reveal Why? a child's gender. This is so Unfortunately, stupid. Unfortunately, some of these celebrations have caused massive destruction. The El Dorado fire that raged through California in 2020 was one of those gender reveal parties that went awry. 
people oh were really God. concerned about the impact that something that started off and seemed so innocent ended up having a, such a uh, amazing impact uh, on people in the community, their homes. In in this case, a life was lost. Imagine being that baby. What if you're that baby? <laughs> Would you feel guilty? Are you like, this is my fault? Or are you just like, yeah, my parents are dumb. I actually would hate that because it's like, fuck, my parents are stupid, so I'm going to be stupid. <laughs> I'd be like five and I'd be like, fuck, I'm doomed. I did not win the genetic lottery. At least Man. the ones who caused the fire called the authorities and owned up to what they have done. Unfortunately, they were also responsible for the destruction of over 23,000 acres of land and, tragically, the death of a firefighter battling the blaze. It injured two additional firefighters. There was loss and damage to residential buildings and other structures. It had a tremendous impact on the community of San Bernardino. In Bro, he said it was amazing, and then he said it was tremendous. This guy's on the fire side. This guy's saying the quiet part loud. Who does he work for? Huh? Talking all good about the fire. In July 2021, sponsored the by was Big Fire, with 30 offenses, including manslaughter for the death of firefighter Charlie Morton. I mean, he's fighting a fire that was started because of a smoke bomb. That's the only reason he's there. Number two, Dashcon. Number two? Oh, number one's Fire Fest. Dashcon was is. designed to be a convention yeah. that was by and for the kids who used Tumblr back in 2014. The fire chill. It to cater to the fandom culture that has always been a major part of Tumblr. Oh, Unfortunately, man. its organizers had no idea what they were doing. What are you doing right now? Waiting. For how long? <laughs> More than an hour. <laughs> On the first night of the event, hotel staff told panelists that the organizers hadn't paid for their accommodation and they'd have to do so themselves. And then it turned out the organizers still owed for the use of the convention facilities <laughs> too. They immediately tried to raise $17,000 through crowdfunding In the room. so the event could continue. To top it all off, after panelists pulled out, the organizers infamously offered guests additional time in a ball pit as an apology. Before we unveil our- Hell yeah! Perfect! Bro, you get more time in the ball pit? That $100 ball pit you got on Amazon, you get to play him in it for 45 minutes instead of 30. Excellent. Thank you, Leon. That's nice. Hot take, Apex 2015 is worse than Dashcon. Uh, do you guys know the story? Hold on. I have another tournament story, but I don't know if any of you guys know this. I will tell it after this movie. How many of you guys know the story of Pound 5? How many of you guys know Pound 5? A lot of people don't. I get to tell you guys about Pound 5. <laughs> stick around, stick around, stick around. Save it for YouTube? No, because I don't have any of the pieces of it. I don't have, like, any of the... I'll show you. Our number one There's no way it's worse than Apex 2015. It's not worse, but it's kind of bad for a different reason. You'll see. Here are some honorable mentions. I can't Best believe nobody's made a pound up. five video La La yet. Land was mistakenly announced as Vince, do we do a pound five movie? How do we even do it? Oh, God. I'll tell you later. The best picture winner instead of Moonlight. That's not a social event. LG Balloons. 20 people were hurt when LG released balloons containing vouchers in Seoul. What? How did they get hurt? What do you mean? What the fuck? <laughs> vouchers? That's paper. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe Number one's to our channel Fist. and ring the bell for to sure. get notified for about sure. our latest for videos. Sure. You have Has the option to be. to be notified for occasional videos or all of oh, them. Man. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into Balloons your settings have killed and people. switch on Name notifications. One. Number one, Fire Festival. Though nobody knew it ahead of time, Fire Fest was doomed. Anyone who'd ever been involved with event production would have understood that this wasn't possible. Like a wedding planner would have known, like absolutely no way. This event was led by rapper Ja Rule and Fire Media Inc. <laughs> CEO Billy McFarland. 
Firefest was supposed to feature many big names performing That's on a small so island funny. in the Bahamas. All the tickets to the island cost a fortune because it was supposed to be a luxury music festival. When guests began to arrive, it turned out that they were going to be staying in damp tents and eating cheese sandwiches. <laughs> cheese sandwich. <laughs> mm. That was when I knew it was just, this was done. They were left stranded on the small tropical island as performers dropped out. In the aftermath, yeah, I both go. Ja Rule and McFarlane were sued. Ultimately, McFarlane went to prison for fraud. It was basically the he exact opposite prison? of everything we were promised. Bro, what happened to Ja Rule? Oh, dude, I gotta save this for later. Ja Rule got away with it. Ten sporting events room by Pete. Hold on, I'm saving this for later. That's good. That's good. I'll save that. Pretty good night of movies. Pretty good night of movies. Not bad. All right, we're not done. Wait, Junebug has a pound five video? Oh! <gasps> this is the real number one. Two people died. Well, this isn't... Hold on. Hold on. No, but this is about a... Pl this is about a person. This isn't... This isn't about pound five, though. Well, I'll tell you... I'll tell you the story in a second. One second. Let me get this. What's this video? How releasing 1,500,000 balloons went horribly wrong? What? <laughs> balloon Fest 86. Nevertheless, lost the balloon and was the size of an entire city block. What Their the structure fuck? was set up on the southwest quadrant of Cleveland's public square and was the size of an entire city block. What the fuck? The history of the floating orbs dropped back down to earth almost immediately. <laughs> Little in the streets of Cleveland and Cl I'm saving this. I'm saving this movie. Hold on. We might watch this in a second. I'm saving this for now. Hold on. First, before I forget. I'm saving it. I'm saving it. First, I need to tell you about Pound 5. Okay? So, Pound 5 was a tournament. That happened in D.C. Okay? Washington, D.C. Uh, this was actually the tournament, if you guys remember the during the Mewtwo King movie, or all the Smash movies, this was the tournament where I played uh, Nick Riddle. This is that tournament, Pound 5. So, long story short, I'll keep this kind of brief. Pound was a series of tournaments that went on from... Uh, all the way back in Melee, and there were a couple events, you know, Pound 1, Pound 2, Pound 3, Pound 4. And Pound 5 was in D.C. at this really fancy place. It might have been at the Ritz. I'm not sure. It was at a really nice place. And everybody goes there, and they have the tournament, whatever. And it, it goes off without a hitch. Everything's fine. Then it turns out, after the tournament, we hear from the T.O. that... Nobody's getting paid. And they're like, what? So the TO booked a deal with that hotel where basically he promised that there would be way more turnout than there would be, than ended up coming. He said there would be way more turnout. Since not enough people showed up, he had to take money from the pot to pay the hotel back for the rooms that were promised to sell. It was Hyatt Regency at Arlington. Okay. So he took all the pot money and he put it toward the hotel. And he was like, yeah, Armada, I know you won pound, but you can't have any money. <laughs> Armada traveled across the country for it. It was pretty crazy. Now... To be fair to the guy, it's a bad deal. It was a shitty decision, but he did pay them back apparently. Just so everybody knows, the guy like he he felt he felt bad about it. It was a mistake. He's not a professional event organizer, you know what I mean? He was just a smash guy. So like, I'm not trying to like say he should, you know. He made a mistake, right? And he did pay them back over time. But yeah, he paid them back over 4 years, a long time. And actually, uh, this sign was on at Raw one night. Plank, where is my pound five money? Plank was the guy that ran the tournament. 
This actually started getting around. This sign was actually made by somebody who I had tremendous beef with, who I think we've squashed. Him and I have come to terms, and we're cool now. But, uh, yeah, it was very funny. This was, this was at Raw. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. Plank's cool now. He paid everybody back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He paid everybody back. He did the right thing. But it was crazy. Pound five, like, I don't, there's a whole story behind it. Junebug made a video about the guy. Maybe I'll watch it sometime. Uh, it's a, fu I, I, I think it will be a good movie. I think it'll be worth it. But, man. That was funny. How many people do you beef with? One. Just this guy. We don't anymore. This was the one guy who I've ever, like, had like, any kind of, like, fight with in Smash. You know what I mean? There have been other people that I don't like or other people that don't like me, but this is the one guy that him and I had, like, bad blood. But again, we squashed it. It was a long time ago. Uh, we, we sort of were over it now. And I think he was right about some things. So, we, we kind of, you know, times change. So. Did he try to take your chair for Evo? No, that's another guy. Two people. I've had beef with two people. But one of them was not long-standing or a long period of time. One of them was just one night that turned into, like, a weird thing. So two people. That's it. Two people. That's all. You guys want to see the dogs? Hey, friends. Remember to drink a glass of water. Is he going to... Why, I think I'll treat myself to one right now. Ung, 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 <laughs> ung, ung, ung. Ah, uh, refreshing. That didn't even really sound like a gulp. There's a better gulp that you can make. Okay. Okay. This is probably the most tragic private event I've ever seen. <laughs> that poor child. What is it? Well, okay. Okay, you shithead. Two-fifths of the way dead? No, I... You know... What? What? What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? Where? Just to be clear, it is tragic that Kayla died at the hands of a monster that climbed through the window. You're right. That's a very tragic public event that happened. I cannot believe the monster killed Kayla in front of all of you. That really is so sad. It really is. Very sad that that happened. Alright, you guys want to see a dog? Let me go get the dog. Hold on. I'm going to go get Todd. I don't think Banjo will come. All right. I'll be right back. One sec. the place so bad. Hold on. I have little turkey snacks. Hold on. You want one? He's very cute. Okay, hold on. Let me zoom this out a little bit. He's very friendly, by the way. If you were here, he would love you. Okay, hold on. Like this? Say hi, baby. Up. Come here. Up. There he is. See? This is him. Sorry, I hit the thing. Up. Up. Come on. Come here. He gets very excited. Come on. Up. 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 I'll hold you. Good boy. Look at this. A stick? You can't eat the whole thing. You get half. Good boy. Yes.
He's very sweet. This is Todd. Should I give him one more? I'll give him one more. Sit. Good boy. He's very cute. He's scared because the green screen is in the way. Come on. Up. Up. What? He's trying. He's getting so excited. Up. Come on. You got to hop over. Yep. Oh, he doesn't He doesn't like the floor because I have hardwood. And he slips because he's got the... Yeah. Poor guy. How old is Todd? He is four? He might be five. Are you four or five? You want to sing a duet? You guys want to see him sing a duet? Hold on. Mallory's gonna kill me. Watch this. So you guys know he's not cheating. Here you go. Good boy. And that's Todd. I want you guys to know. He's a very good boy. I want you guys to know Banjo was literally laying at the bottom of the steps. And as soon as I tried to get him on stream, he ran away. Banjo hates people. I don't know how he knows I'm broadcasting. But the second I was like, Banjo, come on. He literally ran away instantly. Why are you eating dog treats? They're turkey sticks. All gone. All done. All gone. You're a good boy. You want pets? Come here, precious. You're so sweet. You're so sweet. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Mwah. No more treats. All gone. All gone. Thank you. Thank you. All done. He, he really wants something else. Yeah, he's he's apparently a purebred husky. I don't believe it, though, because he's very small. Thank you, Co-Fox, for the raid. Yeah, he's very cute. Okay. We'll get Banjo later. At some point. Banjo does not like being on camera. Okay. Um, I was going to watch a movie about a comedian that I thought was funny. How does Arcade Lammy work? Very well, actually. It works great because that's a CRT. I thought it wouldn't work since it was... Uh, since it was emulated, but no. Banjo's half husky, half lab. Yeah. Okay. Uh. Actually, there's another June bug video here that I sort of wanted to watch, but maybe I'll save that for later. 
new fun videos in the Discord. I have one that I like. Top 10 worst things Animaniacs ever done. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> That's funny. Do the June bug love? <laughs> <laughs> That's Junebug. That's just what he sounds like. All right. So, uh, there's a video that I watched a long time ago, back when I worked my day job. I used to be really into stand up, like stand up comedians. And st is he still here? Guys, he's literally. Hold on. Can you you can't see? He's literally laying right. Hold on. <laughs> he <laughs> he never does this. He's only doing this because there was food. Uh, is this right? Did I get it back right? Is this... Okay. I look taller now. Yeah, this looks good. This is much better. Perfect. I accidentally fixed my camera. Perfect. Um. Anyway. Uh. <sighs> there... I used to be into stand-up comedy and stand-up comedians. And, um, there was one video that showed up in my recommended that I, that I watched and I want to see it again. It's funny. Uh, it is about a comedian known as, can't see us very well. You can see you guys fine. You're not out of focus. I'm in focus, which is what matters. This is how it's always been. It's Dan, isn't it? It absolutely is. It's it's my good buddy Dan Ninen. It's my good friend Dan Ninen. I love this video. This video is funny. <laughs> I love stand up comedy uh long form videos. Who's Dan Ninen? That's a great question. Honestly, that's one I asked myself. But this is a good one. I'm re-uploading this video after Dan Ninen struck the previous one down. I've removed this any is the and second all of the version. footage that belongs to him, so hopefully now he has no grounds to strike it again. Silly me, I thought there would be more countermeasures for content creators to take when someone abuses the 60-year-old millennial. Yeah. He <laughs> takes your video down in order to censor criticism. But clearly, my thinking was naive, and YouTube's copyright system is far more broken than I ever anticipated. I'd like to thank Wang, who helped get the word out about the strike. Dude's awesome, and he makes great content, so uh, go sub to him if you haven't already. And I'd also like to thank Joe Robinson and Rob Mayer who invited me onto their show after I received the strike. I uploaded that interview onto my channel, so check it out if you're interested. The previous upload began with clips of Dan Ninen's horrendous comedy, but since those clips were the reason he was able to strike my video, I'll instead start by reading this advertisement for one of his shows. Dan's been doing the same act since he started comedy, and I guess these are meant to be a collection of his best jokes. Okay, so, um, let me read this thing. <clears throat> My dad is from India. My mom is from Japan. I get my sushi from 7-Eleven. I'm like Harold and Kumar. Thank God my name is Very Easy funny. and not some weird Indo-Japanese combination like Sanjay Hajimoto or Mahatma Mitsubishi. People often tell me, Good, damn, clean your dad family is from fun. India, your mom is from Japan. So that makes you half Asian. To me, Dan Ninen is obviously- That's actually not a bad joke. That's actually not a terrible joke. Because the joke is, you know, people are... That that one's not bad. Your mom is I'll give Japan, it up for that one. So that makes you half Asian. Yeah, that's a to good me, one. To me, Dan I'll give it up for is that. obviously a hack. I mean, it's, it's just not... It's not debatable. And if you don't believe me, feel free to pause this video and watch some of his stand-up. Yeah, so, like I said, total hack. But if he was only guilty of crimes against comedy, then he wouldn't be worth making a video about, now would he? Dan's special because he's probably the most hated man in the American comedy scene. He's garnered this reputation by lying, scheming, getting other comedians fired from shows, poaching their gigs, 
harassing them, and a host of other unscrupulous actions. Yes, underneath editing? his straight-laced, aw shucks facade, is a Machiavellian wolf in sheep's clothing who bites. <laughs> In 2017, a Daily Beast article called Dan Ninen, the media's favorite millennial, is 55 years old, <laughs> was published. The subheading read, Dan Ninen is known as a 35-year-old former Intel engineer who now makes millions as a comedian. The fact that he's 20 years older is the least weird part of his story. On Twitter, comedians rejoiced. They celebrated it as the comedy world's persona non grata finally got his comeuppance. Even comedy superstars like Russell Peters took their shots at Dan. He wrote, good job exposing the sociopath that is a 55-year-old man-child, in a tweet praising Ben Collins, the journalist responsible for the piece. I wonder if Weirdly this guy still enough, gets work. I actually advertising don't know. that he's on tour with Russell Peters is still featured on Dan Ninen's website. I sent a tweet to comedian Rob Mayer asking if he'd talk to me about him. He responded by satirically listing the numerous lies and boasts that Dan is known for. One, he's not a millennial. Two, he doesn't charter private jets. Three, he doesn't make 330 no grand a year right telling well, jokes. I, okay, that's true. Four, yeah. he can't dunk a basketball. That's true. Five, he does enjoy steak. Anything else? Rob Mayer was part of a list of comics who Dan sent thousands of unsolicited emails to. Because at one point or another, they made fun of- Wait, Nick Mullen? When I first watched this, I didn't know who Nick Mullen was. Now I do know who Nick Mullen is. Wow. Or another, okay. They made fun of how terrible I didn't know that back comic. then. Holy In the shit. emails, he brags okay, about how wow. amazing his life is compared to theirs. Calls them broke, drug addicted, bitter jaded losers <laughs> who think they're hot shit but don't make a fraction of what he does. And he also informs them about guy. how much he's raking in, performing comedy across the globe. Is Joe the first person you ever started these emails with? No. These daily emails of taunt, I mean, taunting, relentless taunting. It's what I mean. You admit that, right? Like it, it's. It was like you're sending. I'm in first class. I'm going to this gig. You're a poor piece of shit with a day. Not piece of shit, but with a day job, and you don't get gigs, and you're working bars for ten dollars. I'm at the White House. I'm at. Like it's taunting. It's yeah, very because because these people are saying I am not funny, and that they're so? way funnier than I am. You know. I spoke to another comedian who asked to remain unnamed. As we were talking, he called Dan everything from evil to dangerous to a pathological liar. He told me, "quote." They never stopped. Like he'd email me multiple times on Thanksgiving and Christmas morning, bragging about flights he was on. He would have pictures of me and my family on his iPad. It was too much. He's demented. He said that at first he thought, oh, he's just an insane open micer or some loser who is bitter. But then he gets really dark and you're like, oh, he's seriously deranged. As we were saying our goodbyes, he warned me to be careful. I'm just imagining somebody sending you emails about how successful he is on Christmas. I'm fascinated by this. Because if what these guys are saying, if what Rob and Joe are alleging, you're a fucking nut. <laughs> you, know, you, you agree? I mean, this is insane level shit. I reached out to Dan Ninen on Instagram. He blocked me the next day. Cold, but it did nothing to deter me since almost everything I wanted to know could be found online. A comedian named Brian McGinnis has a Tumblr page where he made 34 emails he received from Dan available for public consumption. It's titled, Dan Ninen is the worst human being ever, the definitive email collection. Underneath, Brian wrote a quick introduction. If you don't know already, there's a comedian named Dan Ninen. He is the worst human being that has ever lived, as the following post will prove 100%. These are a collection of emails he's been sending me for about a year now, completely unedited and unchanged. The first what? I just got an email. What the, or a tweet. It's me. I'm Cone Z from Smashboards. I play Wario at college and my tag is just based on my last name. It's just a funny coincidence. He just saw this? <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Cone Z, are you in here? Listen, just to be clear, I believed you that it was a coincidence. It was just very funny. How did he see this? Did one of you guys send him the clip? If so, that's fine. That's funny. Stream sniped? That's so funny. <laughs> this was the other guy he had beef with. I had zero beef with Code Z. I just thought it was funny. I was like, this is insane. It would be like, it would be like, I was worried the comedian in the video was tweeting at you. That'd be so funny. 
This would be like if there was a player from like Argentina whose name was like MC Leonardo. You know what I mean? Like that, it just, it was so strange. That's so funny email reads subject line eight thousand dollars for a show in dubai may i gloat just a bit thank you i just received the initial deposit for a corporate show in dubai that's coming up in a couple of weeks the show pays eight thousand dollars so yes that's right eight thousand us dollars for less than one hour's work and yes i'll be flying in first <laughs> class as usual an unbelievable luxury with a flat bed i'll be checking out the indoor ski range surfing on the sand dunes visiting the tallest building in the world and the world's largest shopping mall, and luxuriating <laughs> by the pool of my five-star hotel. And yes, I will send pictures. I know I shouldn't be gloating, and I know I should be spending my time working on my book in preparation for my upcoming meeting this is with so my literary good. agent, and I know it really pisses off poor-ass alcoholic drug-addicted comedians when you tell them how much money you make, but when something like this happens, such as the $15,000 corporate show I did earlier this year in San Francisco, <laughs> or dealing with the deluge of royalty checks for my Apple commercial, $22,000 so far in SAG health insurance, thank you, I just can't help but think about all the people who told me, and still tell me, that I'm a hack. This guy got a gig and sent this to everybody who didn't like- This is so fucking- And that I shouldn't oh, be doing ethnic man. material. I'm a sello, and so forth. I can't There's help the but period. think about we all found the club a period. bookers in New York that turned me down, and continue to turn me down, about all the comedians who brag about their credits on Premium Blend, Live at Gotham, Jimmy Kimmel, and Comics Unleashed, who still have day jobs and drive hundreds of miles to their crappy occasional gigs that pay three digits, and that get drunk Man. and smoke weed after the shows, and stay up till the early morning. I can't help but think about the weed- You should talk to mid-level commentators like this. <laughs> As I'm sitting, in in coach on my $100 spirit flight on my way to Sandusky, Ohio, I can't help but think about the $400 I'm going to make over five days. <laughs> Dude, that would be so fucking funny. I, I should... Oh, that's good. That's good. I'll be lounging by a pool full of eight-year-old children. Having them splash me while I drink a non-alcoholic margarita. <laughs> oh, that's good. There's a ball pit. Oh, man. That's funny. The clever New York comics who are past at all the clubs, whom you can't even recognize if you haven't seen them in a year or two, because they've aged so much. Oh, the joy and the shy- Chat- Okay, you guys got weird with it. Come on. It's the fucking, it's because it's a kid pool. The whole place is a fucking kid. Why are you guys so weird, man? Why do you guys have to get weird with it? Huh? This is why I can't send the fucking dog picture to anybody. I didn't Florida. Come on, guys. Yes, indeed. I'll be reminiscing about all of this on the long plane ride to the Emirates with a shit-eating grin on my face. He signs off with... If you, listen, uh, okay. Dan Ninen, comedian slash actor slash voiceover artist Man. slash computer genius, okay. Okay. New York I'm gonna, slash I'm gonna Beverly stop. Hills, 212-414-2129, okay. www.ninen.com. As you can see, Dan Ninen is the type of guy who can't get enough of the smell of his own farts. And subsequent emails share the same smug, self-satisfied tone. Like I said, Dan kept a list of comedians who've criticized his material and sent them emails bragging about how much better off he is than they are. In Dan's mind, since uh, they think they're funnier than he is, well, then they should be doing just as well as him. My unnamed source told me that the email chain consisted of, quote, a shitload of comics. Altogether, there's probably thousands of emails out there just like this one. But well, why do you like? There are so many people in this world and this country that talk shit about me. I mean, that's such yeah, a waste you of your happen? energy to like care. Well, I mean, you know, I have. What do you want if, if you, Joe, like, if you, you think you, you're going to be vindicated, people people don't like your jokes. No, if why would he go on but this see, podcast? See, Joe, if 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 a loser like yourself, okay, wow, has, has to have, oh shit, who shots fired. <laughs> In 2013, Joe Robinson, a comedian and radio host, met Dan after they did a show together at a Hyatt in Bethesda, Maryland. For Joe clout? was the headliner and Dan like... was the MC. 
Joe told the Daily Beast, quote, After the show, he sold a book, a DVD, and a CD. He did eight minutes of comedy, <laughs> so I decided to say something about it. About how he shouldn't be selling a book about how to make it in comedy if he's emceeing at a Hyatt. Joe talked about his exchange with Dan. That is kind of fucked up to say, though. Comedian Rob if I'm Dan, and I'd be kind of mad, too. Joe Robinson was added to the infamous email chain. I contacted Joe, and he told me that Dan sent him over 100 emails. He told <laughs> the Daily Beast that at their peak, they'd come in a few times per day. Dan even tried to get Joe fired from his radio job by doing a criminal history check and then talking to his employers. When that didn't work, See, this is Dan very funny if you're not a part of it. On the Isle of Man. You know? For some reason, he thought it was legal to engage in hand-to-hand -hand on the Isle of Man. I forgot about that part. Lawyers. When that didn't work, Dan challenged him to a fight to the death on the Isle of Man. For some <laughs> reason, he thought it was legal to engage in He hand wanted to, to fight him to the death. There. I forgot about that not part. I'm sure where yeah. he read that, but it's not. But I gotta give credit to Dan. It's probably yeah. the funniest thing he's ever written. To understand Dan Ninen better, let's start from the beginning. Dan Ninen was born in Bloomington, Indiana in May of 1961. I repeat, 1961. He was not born, as it claims on his website, in 1981. His father is a nuclear physicist from India, and his mother is a child psychologist from Kyoto, Japan. He describes his childhood as a troubled one. Not because of his parents, who he says were loving and supportive, but instead because he was tormented by bullies at school. Well, my parents were and are fantastic. My problem, though, stemmed from problems with my peers, and I was very brutally bullied birthday? and an outcast, and just just had no friends. And it was very, it was a very tough childhood. He majored in general business and management at the University of Maryland. In 1996, he was hired by Intel at their corporate headquarters located in Santa Clara, California. There, he was tasked with performing technical demonstrations at Intel events so around the weird. world. Suffering from a fear of public speaking, he sought out a class that could help him ease his anxiety while on stage. Toastmasters helped, but not enough. So he joined a comedy class. In the year 2000, he took a promotion as Intel's strategic relations manager for the East Coast, which relocated him to New York City. He said that, quote, even though it paid a lot more money, I hated it. No travel, no playing with technology, and I was home-based and rarely got to see any co-workers. I was absolutely bored. He says that after watching Actual planes crash into the World Trade Center from his corner in Manhattan, and after seeing so many people die right in front of him, he realized that his life needed a change. So he left his job at Intel in order to pursue comedy full-time. Okay, that's weird. Because in a New York Post article from 2009 called Second Acts, Dan says he was fired from Intel. Cody, people lie about their age and height all the time. I can't imagine. Not that he was compelled can't to imagine. quit after witnessing 9-11. That'd be very In weird. a Business Insider article called Five People Who Radically Altered Their Careers After 9-11, it says, On September 11th, Dan was able to watch both towers fall from his corner in Manhattan, New York City. After watching so many people die right in front of him, he realized that he needed a change. He left his job to pursue comedy full time. So yet again, this time from a Huffington Post blog, it says that he was laid off in 2007, which doesn't really make sense because there is definite proof that he was well into his comedy career by that point. So Dan, which one was it? Were you fired from Intel in 2007? Or did 9-11 compel you to quit and pursue a comedy career? Well, no you keep man. everything but your story straight, right Dan? <laughs> right. <laughs> Dan's comedy career took off quite quickly. Why is he getting quickly. roasted on the Within podcast? Within a few years, he was already touring with successful comedians like Bob Saget, Robert Schimmel, and Russell Peters. And in less than a decade, he was making a good living as a stand-up comedian. But something was missing. For all of his accomplishments, he never earned any respect from his peers. Other comedians found his material insipid and uninspired. They saw him as a hack who used racial jokes as a crutch. And boy, did they let him know. Just as he was an outcast during his... Dude, did you guys, were you guys alive for Carlos Mencia? Were you guys around for Carlos Mencia? It was like this, but worse. It was just like... No, but I know the... Dude, the world was fucking obsessed with Carlos Mencia. Oh my god. People loved that guy. And all of his jokes were like... I'm Mexican, I'm Mexican. And you're white, and he's black, and we should love each other, but I'm Mexican. Mind of Mencia slayed with moms. Yeah, yeah, I'm fat. 
Yeah, no, I'm fat as like Gabriel Iglesias. He still does that. George Lopez? No, George Lopez. George Lopez is like set up, set up, set up, and then the punchline is Spanish, so I never get to have fun watching it. Whenever I watch George Lopez, I'm like, uh? Uh? Oh. I don't know what he's saying. <laughs> you know? You know? Doesn't every comedian do that? Not all of them. I think I think that was a thing back in like the 2000s, you know? Dude, I remember who was the there was an Asian comic that I talked about on street. Joe Coy, was he the guy who had like 60 minutes of material on his mom? It'd just be like, my mom is so Asian. And it was that, Joe Coy, yeah, for 60 minutes. My mom is so Asian. And he just did a funny voice. <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. Dane Cook was so fucking funny in the 2000s. If you watch him now, you don't get it. He was so fucking funny. It's like Family Guy. If you weren't around for it, like, it, it legitimately was so fucking funny. I'm telling you. It's not much now, but it was so funny. Formative years. I'm he was telling also you. Also, an outsider in the comedy scene. Here's Dane an Cook was not that funny. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. Back then, Dane Cook was so fucking funny, dude. I'm telling you. You have to believe me. It was so funny back then. Book, the best book on how to become I'm a full-time stand-up comedian. Yes. Family Guy has never been funny. You are 17 years old. You are 17, for sure the title if you listen it's not that family guy isn't funny anymore it's that everybody else has done family guy and now it's old back in the like like in the 1999 or like early 2000s family guy was so fucking funny because nobody did it like that and now everybody's sort of you know a, as things have changed it was so funny back then i'm telling you i'm telling you i'm telling you it was it was unlike anything anybody had ever seen I'm telling you. I've watched most of Family Guy and I don't remember a funny moment. No, 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 no. It's not funny now because now you're exposed to the internet. And the internet is Family Guy at large. On the internet, you can scroll down Twitter and be like, oh, I remember this ad from the 1980s or the 1990s. This meme that I saw when I was a kid, I get it because I watched SpongeBob. When you watched Family Guy, you would see the Kool-Aid guy who you hadn't seen in 20 years burst through the door. And you're like, holy fuck, I remember that. That's what the internet is now. Memes are family guy at large. That's it. That's literally it. That's why family guy isn't funny anymore. I'm telling you. I am telling you. It broke ground. Seinfeld stayed funny. That's true. You can make the argument that, like, it's not funny because it's, uh, because it, you know, it, it wasn't timeless, which is totally fair. You can make that argument that it's, like, old Simpsons is still good now. Family Guy's dated. Totally get it. But at that time, it was funny. I promise you. I promise you. Well, and yes, I I'm actually did read the thing. Where he talks about joining a comics roundtable workshop with ten other comedians and calls it, so it quote, the most awful experience imaginable. Nobody laughed at any of each other's jokes. Of course, I laughed at all the jokes because I love to laugh. But comedians are notorious for not laughing when they're off stage. I don't know if that's true. I remember watching this video and I literally looked it up. I don't know. Or is it just nobody laughed at, at his jokes? I don't know. I was seen as the weak link in the round table, even though my stuff was already killing in clubs. They even held a remedial meeting for two comedians whom they thought were the weakest. And I was one of them. Remedial Needless to say, meeting. the group self-destructed. In another chapter, he writes, When I started out, I was part of an online forum that was absolutely awful. I was the target of a tremendous amount of vitriol because of the ethnic nature of my act. Now that I have a successful career, the last thing I want to do is waste my time. Cody, I feel like you either love Norm MacDonald or hate him. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Take a guess. <laughs> I fucking love Norm Macdonald. I love Norm Macdonald. I've said that before. I've said, th oh wait, who just showed, who just followed? What's good? Code Z is in the building. 
Code Z, what's good, baby? How you doing? Dude, you came up tonight. You came up on something else happened with a story, and I had to bring up that story. That's so funny. <laughs> That's my fucking boy. <laughs> Oh, man, that's such a good story. I was so confused, dude. I'm trading insults with a so much hype for a follower. Dude, I literally keep follower alerts on just like for funny names. Sometimes it makes me laugh. That's it. And I don't ever say it because I hate it. Like, I, I hate the idea of me following a channel and then like somebody shouting me out. F I can hate that. But sometimes the names are very funny. And when I saw Cone Z come in, I had to open the door for him. A bunch of comedians who are bitter, jaded, and angry because their careers have gone nowhere. Now, we already know this, but although he wrote that he sees trading insults with other comedians as a waste of time, he ironically devoted a lot of energy to doing precisely that by writing them unsolicited emails. In one such email, he says that he sent them to people who rejected me from performing in their clubs, or told me I would never go anywhere in comedy, or told me I'm a hack, etc. Once in a while, I like to send emails like that out to people who fit that description just to let them know how well I'm doing and that my reality is brighter than their dreams. Dude, so I'm probably going to travel to a Smash tournament. I think I'm going to Texas. Uh, and I don't think I'm staying on site at the tournament. I think I'm going to have to stay at like a Motel 6 that's like a mile away because the actual tournament is so expensive. <laughs> I just want to write this. As I lay here in my twin size bed... At the Motel 6, three hours from the venue. I think about all the people who said I would never make it. I'm different from other comedians. I use the oh, rejections that's as fuel that's as funny. motivation to reach even greater heights. Another email that's sharing good. the same sentiment reads, Every time I have a victory, I think about you guys. You provide me with tremendous motivation. I owe you a world of thanks. Last night, as I was being introduced, I had tears of joy in my eyes. It was incredible. $10,000 just to talk for 45 minutes in a beautiful resort. What a crazy business this is. How sad that you will never experience anything like this, even though you could. He ends the email by signing off with, sent for my ridiculously overpriced iPad 2. Yo, Yo, you're you, an asshole. Yeah, you a and you're a failure. <laughs> you failed. You quit comedy because you saw Dave Chappelle, and then you, then when I met you, you said you said you'd already quit. You quit comedy twice, Joe. You quit comedy twice, and you're nowhere. You do like you know these, these shows in Arbutus and 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 Magoobies, and you have a day job. I've been to Magoobies, by the way. And you're you're a freaking failure, okay? You're okay. a failure, Joe. Pretty good place. So jail, Calvin. And so now Rob is actually pretty so, funny. It's and, in and our so beauty spiral. So, uh, not to this, so is uh, no. You can say Patrick. Abuse. That's fine. No, you're not a we'll failure. Yeah, you're a the NFL draft for the flagship station. So how does an unfunny and unlikable comedian build a career in a field in which those two things are presumably not only an asset but also a must? Well, that's because he's a natural marketer with a low moral barometer, which, as we all know, is synonymous with born liar. Dan credits this YouTube video with being responsible for getting him booked in 28 countries and on five continents. He uploaded it in 2006 and filled the description box with his contact info, which oh, I guess he blurred it because yeah, since the calls yeah, and emails strike, still yeah. come in once or twice a week from people who see it and want to book him. By the way, let's just uh, let's let's take a look at the comments because none of them seem genuine. Honestly, the whole comment section just seems like Dan is talking to his bots. <laughs> like, like this comment here, for example. Dan, you are so funny. I laughed until I cried. Thank you for being clean. I'm tired of the filth passed off as comedy. May you skyrocket in popularity, good man. I mean, that's, that's totally Dan, right? And who else would add that they're tired oh. of filth passed off as comedy? Other than the 100% clean Positive Indian YouTube comments. Himself. Anyway, uh... I'm gonna just... just uh, if you ever see a positive comment on my YouTube, I wrote it. Just so you know. Thank you, Kunk. That's my sock puppet. Check out some of his other videos. Oh, he plays the violin? That's me. Okay, guess not. Wait, what What are the comments? What are people saying? <laughs> oh, I, 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 wait, what, what are the comments? What are people saying? Pretty bad even for one day. Who cares? I don't think many people can play like that on their first day. In any case, that's my sixth instrument. I've toured professionally playing keyboards, guitar, and bass guitar. Let's see what you can do. Sorry about that. I don't know why I said this. I prefer pink positive. Okay, no worries. All right, well, it all worked out. 
Thank you, Goro. <laughs> it all worked well, out. I, it's I, okay. I've never, I've I've never quit. I've never quit. Hey, pal, that's my sixth instrument, and that was the first day I was playing. You're horrible <laughs> at it. Go back to the I was pod. I was horrible at it at that time. Joe, it was my first day. I'd never had a lesson. Dan used a site called Help a Reporter so Out, good. which pairs journalists with sources in order to garner a hell of a lot of free publicity. He appeared in Forbes, the Chicago Tribune, Business Insider, CNN, the Wall Street Journal, and the New York Times could I on do at this? Least six occasions. A fact that could be found plastered all over his website. Now here's the issue. Hmm. Dan wasn't a credible source, like at all. And as a consequence, he's labeled as a millennial in hundreds of articles, <laughs> even though he's pushing 60. 31? In this shot? 31 years old. Dan claimed to be 35 in a Cosmopolitan Holy article shit. called, Why Are Some Millennials Swearing Off Porn? He was 31 in a New York Times article called, Buying Their Way to Twitter Man. Fame, where he copped to buying 220,000 Twitter followers for $424.15. In 2011, he told the Wall Street Journal that he was 36. That same year, he appeared on a website called Twentity as a 29-year-old, even though he was 51 at the time. Twentity is a site which caters to readers in their 20s, so in that case, it's probably right where Dan belongs. By bending the truth, Dan gained free publicity. People would read about him and think, wow, this guy's amazing. He's only 29, but he's already done so much. He's worked in Silicon Valley and then transitioned into a successful career as a comedian. Just what can't this kid do? Several years ago, there was a buzz surrounding a former marketer named Ryan Holiday, who was able to dupe the media into printing anything he wanted. Just like Dan, he did this by using Help a Reporter Out. He even wrote a book detailing his process called, Trust Me I'm Lying, Confessions of a Media Manipulator. I forgot I wanted to hear about this guy. I wanted to read up on this guy's story. He basically just got a bunch of shit published in the news that was absolutely fake. That's so neat. Fun fact, that the you most just recent edition of the book begins with a preface that mentions Dan Ninen. Anyway, I've collected some quotes from the book that explain how Dan was able to get away with so many lies to the press. You think that fact-checking would be an instrumental part of the job for anyone who calls themselves a journalist, but as Ryan Holiday writes, that's sadly not the case. Journalists say help a reporter out is a research tool, but it isn't. It is a tool that manufactures self-promotion to look like research. Help a reporter out essentially encourages journalists to look for sources who simply confirm what they were already intending to say. Writing online is often called That's a digital neat. sweatshop for good reason. Ceaseless fight for tables. Isn't that half of the internet now? I guess so. Yeah. In 1975, you just find whatever you want to say. Had you a know. Few days to work on a piece. Now they have a few minutes. Today, the online-driven news cycle is going a million miles a minute in a million directions. The New York Times may still try to validate their sources, but it hardly matters, because no one else does. Damn, that's crazy. When did this video come out? 2019. Damn. Huh. That was before all this. To become wealthy and to become a millionaire quickly, and one is to make a lot of money, and the other is to be as frugal as possible. Well, not really before, I guess. That's like... It was like in the middle of it. In fact, no, it was it was worse in 2016. Never mind. I'm stupid. I feel like this video came out before that. I feel like it. This is re-uploaded, but oh wait, original video. Okay, maybe that was it. I was gonna say because I feel like this is older. Nest egg. In fact, the 32-year-old. In fact, the 32-year-old. 32-year-old. Dan has a track record of making almost exact replicas of Asian comedians' websites and replacing their contact information with his own. When someone would try to book That's a comedian, smart. he did this too, such as Paul Verghese, Omar Shakat, or Esther Ku. They'd end up on the phone with him instead. Esther wrote on Twitter that. He That's actually not. That's pretty genius. That's pretty smart. It's very shitty, but that's pretty funny. He tried to sell her website back to her, and Omar Shakat even has evidence of this on the About section of his site. <laughs> Dan also did a similar thing to Russell Peters. Here's what Russell had to say about him on the Joe Rogan experience. Oh my god. Well, somebody did that to Registered my website. Google. Old Joe made, Rogan. Uh, uh, MyRussellPeters.com, they put uh, RussellPeters.com with one L. Uh, and then they completely cut and pasted all my shit from my website to that one. And what did they, th were they doing anything? There like was this fucking douchebag guy. I don't want to even say his name because I don't want to give him any credit. But he, he thinks he's a comic and he's a, just a fucking douche. Uh, so I he, used to really like Russell Peters. Fuck with you? I yeah, because think then I liked one of his specials. Go to contact I don't remember info, though. And he had his number there. What? You know he what I'm opened saying? for me like, like three times or something. And it wasn't like I asked him to open for me. He would like, 
he would like sort of stalk me and be like, hey, I see you're going to be in Indiana this Friday. I'm going to be in town there on Thursday night doing a corporate. Do you mind if I do a set on the Friday? You don't have to pay me or anything. Wow. Okay. Wow. Wow. And it worked like three times, and I was like, wait a minute. Russell, the fuck get, are you always where I'm going to be the day before? Russell, can, yeah. I, get, can I get yeah. the luck of your hair? Can Basically. I get the luck of your hair? That guy sounds crazy. It looks like Cody's in on the guy. podcast. Oh, it does, guy. actually, yeah. <laughs> but he was like doing this kind of The spot of I'm filling up, there's nothing happening sneaky here. Sneaky snake shit. Like, Saying that he was going to get you to do guess that, so he, was he calling you and, hey, Russell, you're No, we, I, we're not friends set? at all. You're not friends at no, all. No, he's using you as a center point. He was using my name, like. Yeah, no, I, I, cause, cause he opened for me before. You meet so wow. many weird fucking people in this business, man. Man, he's not even a guy who wants to go work the road. He's like one of these douchebags who just decided he was gonna do comedy. Wow. And he uses jokes off the internet. It's fucking horrible. <laughs> <laughs> he's a complete fucking cornball. But on September 25th, I fucking love hearing hearing stories about comedians because they're all so weird. They're all so fucking weird. 2013, I love it. Dan Ninen punched a Daily Beast reporter named Josh Rogan in the face during a show at the DC Improv after he criticized his act on Twitter. The criticism it. itself was mild. All he had to write to set Dan off was, Dan Ninen was funny until he dusted off his 2005 Katrina jokes in a gratingly bad George W. Bush impression. Dan Ninen makes his upteenth joke about how Asians can't distinguish between the letters <laughs> L and R. Election, erection, we get it. After being assaulted, Josh Rogan and <laughs> he beat the guy up because he said, "Stop making hack Asian jokes." Oh yeah, <laughs> he fights him in the parking lot. Formed his followers to beat his with ass. A tweet. Dan Ninen just punched me in the face. <laughs> Not a joke. This was followed by Holy we are calling shit. the police on Dan Ninen, who just punched me twice in front of several witnesses. DC police arrested Dan Ninen for assaulting oh. me. Later, Rogan told the whole story to the press. Quote, Should Dan Ninen comes Isle over of Man. to me and yeah. says, Are you Josh Rogan? And I said, Yes. And then he punched me in the jaw. And then he pushed me. Then he walked away, and about 10 seconds later, he came over and he punched me again. After he was arrested, someone found the police report and exposed his real oh, no. age. Not his date. Regardless, it did oh, nothing no, to they stop got his Dan age. from harassing comedians online and lying to the press. In the following oh, two years, man. Dan's behavior just became worse. Around this time, Mark Marin, comedian and host That's of the, how they got his age. What the Fuck podcast, received a handful of emails that he decided to read on his show. I get a series of emails out of the blue from a guy I don't know, nor have I ever heard of, and I'm not <laughs> going to mention his name. For a couple of reasons. He was a fucking dick on these emails, and I couldn't quite believe his Drop angle. the emails. The Send one. them. Subject line. Prick, fuck, alt comics who don't earn any money doing comedy who give advice. I'd like to be on your podcast. Subject, how I stopped listening to bitter, jaded, angry, dysfunctional, <laughs> prick, emails fuck, all village me. comics who tell me not to do my style of comedy and now earn over $250,000 a year without ever having a drink, drug, cigarette, or prescription <laughs> drug and without a single credit, in quotes, meaning a TV credit, without a manager or agent and without being passed at a single club in the city. So this guy is basically saying, put me on your show. I've done nothing that normal comics do to pay their dues and find their own voice. What kills and me have, is, like, if he just shut the fuck up, he'd be so successful, dude. Somehow figured out a way to make a quarter million dollars a year. Man. And having nobody heard of me. By 2015, the emails finally stopped. First, Rob Mayer and Joe Robinson of the Rob and Joe show like, called Dan and had a heated conversation succeed, on the air. You know? However, this was cut short since Dan was scheduled to appear in person on Patrick Melton's podcast called Nobody Likes Onions. Surprisingly, Dan showed up. Here's a highlight reel of what transpired. I mean, are you, are you saying you're 33 years old? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm 74. I just no, turned. But jokes aside, I mean, this is a serious... You can't say your age. What, what difference is... Is this some... Um, oh, who's that comedian? The... Wyatt Sinek? Is that his name? Does he host this? Did he say that? Did I miss it? It sounds like Wyatt Sinek. I mean, why, why is that so important? Yes, exactly. Why is it so important? Why, why do you important? care so much? <laughs> well, I'm 74. I'm telling you. I look amazing for You're 74. You're not 74. <laughs> I am 74. But <laughs> if you were 54... You look amazing for 54. Why not just own that? <laughs> I, I look great for 44. <laughs> I mean, is it even funny to continue to say you're 74? No, you try to pretend you're younger because you think that's marketable. Okay, but then you get busted, and then you're I, a human, and I, you just say, you know what, you got me. So for the people who don't understand, this is Joe Robinson, comedian in uh, D.C., 
failed comedian in DC. Okay, you you admit that you are you and you have said many times you are a much better comic than I am. Correct? Well, everybody thinks that, Dan. Right. Okay. So why aren't you doing at least as what well, as well as I'm doing then? Okay. As you feel like the world is telling you, or at least the comedy world is telling you, you're hacked. Don't Man. do this. Don't do that. You're doing it wrong. And your kind of attitude is, I'm an artist. Who says he can't do this material? You did! On your podcast! You ripped me apart for 10 minutes for that da- Grace yeah, Jonah joke. Yeah. And yeah, then you try ridiculous. to deny it. You liar. <laughs> because well, fine, because it's care. hurting your life. You it's hurting you. Friend? I don't care if he what doesn't like you me. What do you want from me? You do care if he likes you. You're lying. That's a what lie. What do you want from me, Dan? No, no, no. I because don't. Because you wouldn't spend so much time going, you said, you called me this, you said that. Like, that's very, Patrick, like, you do I, care. I, I have, I have, you know. I love stories I, like I this. I mean, I don't need so him much. to like me. No, I do not. You it's, do. See, it looks that way, you though. Do. When you spend you so does. much it time. It looks that way a lot. Here's it does sound like Seinfeld, actually. I didn't even notice that. Researching. It only has 278 views and only two likes, but holy hell is it ever a gold mine. It's a segment from a show called The Daily Helper, which Dan appeared on as a guest. The gist of the show is that guests have a problem and a panel of therapists try to fix it in front of a live audience. So Dan went on this show with the question, how do I get my anger and problems with narcissism in check before they ruin my career? Well, I guess my question is, you know, okay, I get criticized a lot. I mean, online. Oh and, man, I don't you know, remember a lot this of part. People saying really hateful stuff online. And I- now it's sad though. Now this is sad. If he's trying to get help, and if he knows he's this kind of per, uh, now I feel bad. How to deal with that? One of my questions for you is, do you feel like you've actually gotten? And then he never listened to their advice. Okay, maybe. Was it not said before? Well, now it's. Well, then again, yeah, this is on live TV, and it's like, it's a sympathetic bait. Uh, Okay, yeah, maybe. Into a place. Where Maybe. you really truly accept yourself. Maybe I don't know. And know that you're good inside. That Man. you don't have to prove yourself to anybody anymore. Or do you still oh, have questions no, about no. that? I don't think so. Clearly, they already did some digging and knew about Dan's past indiscretions and were prepared to corner him. Dan brought up that he was bullied in high school, which is something he does a lot. But they weren't buying it. Was very bullied um, in school a lot and very uh, physical abuse mm-hmm. and emotional and I mean just every day, just you know, just relentless and. Um, I still have problems with that. That first day of school, what message did you take away? Well, about you. You know that, um, you know, I I don't look right or I'm, you know, too nerdy or too skinny or the glasses uh, or, you you know, it's just, you're just a loser. Do you feel like you're a loser? Not now, no, but then, yeah, I mean, every day, I mean, it was just torment. Watching this, it occurred to me that he's just using his unfortunate past with bullies in order to excuse his nasty behavior. But I'm not sure that you don't feel that way because you feel the need to respond to the naysayers when they come after you online. You go back to them. Yeah, I know, and I, I shouldn't. It's a waste of time. I, I got a million other things with I could be With a lot of hostility. <laughs> Yeah, well, because I mean, I'm just let's, so let's busy and famous. This, yeah, this yeah. isn't just, right, hey, right, why did yeah. you say that? This hurt my feelings. You can get pretty downright nasty and ugly and angry. I, I can, yeah. Have I can say, look, what, Dan, have you turned into what you despise? Uh, well, the thing is, you know, are you, uh, a, bu- are you no. a bully? Maybe there's something underneath this anger. I see, I see a lot of fear and I see a lot of sadness. It's probably never seen the light of day. This is the piece. Man, now I feel bad. The piece that you Poor continue Dan. to just glean. Yeah, this is a fucked up show. It's even like a glass house they're living in here. Anybody could peek in and watch this guy's whole session. Over. Oh, it was just, well, I, there was some insults hurled. Oh, well, I just kind of pushed him. Oh, well, you know, I just kind of got upset. These are the issues that until you get real about these, you cannot talk about the way that they are impacting your life. And until you wake up and get real about that, nothing is going to change for you. Are they actual therapists? Here's a quote I like... found from one of his interviews that I think says a lot about Dan's troubled psyche. Since I was a nerd and still am, I was a complete social outcast in school. People ask me if I was ever in any fights. I was in a number of meetings. There was one boy in particular who tortured me physically and mentally every day. I absolutely dreaded coming to school because of him and others. He was really good looking, all the girls were after him, and in addition to being really smart and really good looking, he was also 
also very athletic and on the football team. <laughs> At the graduation party... To now he's gassing up this guy. ...which I was not invited, of course. He was drunk and drove his motorcycle into a parked car and had to go to the hospital. He was never quite the same. He was disfigured, mentally slow, and had a permanent limp. He shot himself to death a couple of years later. I guess there really is such a thing as karma. I recently went to my 10 year reunion and it was amazing to see how all the football players have gotten fat and bald and I still look the same. It was really quite cathartic. The first- What the fuck? Dan? Uh, I should not have- I told you not to pity him, Coney. Okay, no, you're right. You're... That's definitely a fake story. That's definitely a fake story, which actually makes it worse. The fact that he made that up. Here we go! Dan is what happens when you don't let shit go. That's bizarre. Thank you, Regnilla. Dan Ninen is on the move. What is this? Twentity. What? Twenty somethings on the move. Dan nine and twenty nine. Is this where he brings it up? Man. First time I read this, it made me shiver. He was fifty one at the time, so him saying that he recently he was fifty one. He went to his ten year high school Man. reunion is doubtful. Regardless, such a tragic story, true or not, shouldn't be told with glee, even if you're talking about a bully who tormented you. But in Dan Ninen's case, he just celebrates. I think the biggest takeaway from Dan Ninen's story is the importance of letting go of your past. It's clear to me that Dan chased money, success, and power, Man. or at least the appearance of those things, in order to bandage his crippling- Bro, that's not his jet. Nobody is on a private flight. This is a private charter jet, and you're drinking Arrowhead? This can't, this is not real. This, this is a budget flight. It's fucking Arrowhead. This is like 48 for six bucks. Arrowhead slaps. Shut up. Success and Shut power. Up. Or at least a That's a studio, yeah, things, yeah. In order to bandage his crippling self-esteem. When he was confronted with naysayers, he lashed out. I and tried to Arrowhead, prove that dude. he was better than them. Going through his social media, all you see is examples of his lavish <laughs> lifestyle and his material goods. No family. <laughs> his fucking credit score? Man. Oh, he met Dave Chappelle. Good for him. No friends. Nothing but planes, cars, and celebrities. And it all just seems sad. Even if Dan was the richest, most famous comedian on earth, I don't think he'll ever be content until he gets over his dick measure. Is... Is this real? What? Obama's pogging for him. You got a cameo, you think? Measuring contest with he the is world. awesome! In other words, if you're watching this, Dan, work on yourself instead of trying to control how others see you. Woo! What is this? What is this recommended video? Documenting a modern psychopath 52 minutes? That one's great, is it? I just, I can't deal with, like, YouTube movies that are trying to diagnose people, you know? More comedian documentaries? I would love to. I would love to find more comedian movies. Is Todd still behind you? Uh, nope, he left. He's gone. That's part one of two? What? Oh my god, you're right. Holy shit. That's bizarre. Coney, let us know if you get into the email list. Hold on, let me look. Is he still working? He's on Twitter. His last tweet was in April. Comediandan.com He's still on tour with Russell P. Oh, wait, no. I think they just said that that didn't happen. Dude, what the heck is this? What? 
So, <laughs> 100% clean Indian comedian. He has a booking number. This is like the 2001 Comedy Central logo. Clients. The Department of Justice? He performed for the FBI? The Asia Society? What the fuck? Seven... He did comedy for 7-Eleven? <laughs> for what? eBay? <laughs> the United Nations? Holy fuck, dude! This guy rules! What are celebrities saying about Dan? Yoko Ono? The Beach Boys? Holy shit, this guy rules. Man, this guy has credits. Good for him. <laughs> I would love more movies like these. I'm telling you. I've never heard of this guy's channel, really. Like, I, I've only seen that video. Gay Frogs, a deep dive. My brief and intense interview with John McAfee. John McAfee, the make craziest man in tech. John McAfee has died. Why does it say I've watched this? Maybe it autoplayed. The Steve Rocco one is insane. I don't know that one. Uwa Bowl. I forgot about that. I forgot about Uwa Bowl. Holy shit. The bear that ate 76 pounds of cocaine. It's four minutes. Man. <laughs> I think I know how that story ends. I think that Bear ate a bunch of cocaine and then died. <laughs> Jeez. That poor Bear. I don't think that Bear made it. That's a lot of pounds of cocaine, dude. He ate it and then he died. Yeah. I want to watch the Balloon movie, but I think it's too long. It's already what? It's 1230? Yeah, I think we got to call it. Oh, it's only 15 minutes. Maybe. Fifteen minutes isn't that bad. Other dog? Dude, Banjo's not coming down here. There's no world that Banjo comes down here. I could bring him down if I trick him into thinking we're going outside. If you guys would like me to. Wait, is it? Oh shit, I'm so out of focus. You're right, the chat was out of focus, like, way more than it needed to be, because it's back here. One sec. Is this what you want? Is this what you want? You guys in full focus, just like this? If you don't want me to trick him, you're not going to see him. That's the only way to get him down here. It's not going to happen. I'm telling you. Okay. Yeah, I got Todd's fur on my mic thing now. All right, back, forward. Okay, I think this is the right one. Good. All right, one more. Let me go this. I think this is it? Yeah, perfect, perfect. Good, good, good. Okay. SD chat. Yeah, that's what you get. All right, we'll watch the Balloons movie. One more movie. Then we end it for tonight. I'll be back Tuesday, though. I'm sad, dude. I wanted to play a video game on stream. I'm so sad that game wasn't great. I mean, I, I'm sure it's fine. I'm just sad I didn't get to play it, you know? Tough. Okay. Balloon movie.
Just about everything is ready for Balloon Fest 86, set to take place in downtown Cleveland tomorrow. What game? To I played uh, Spookware. Literally and millions it was of balloons good, will be released on public square, but it which was too story-based. Watching a colorful balloon drift away into the sky much ignites a basic childlike joy within us all. When do you go to Riptide? Thursday night. Mind so I'll stream Tuesday and Wednesday, but not Thursday. Half million balloons being released I did play a lot months? of Claw. That's well, that's true. exactly what executives from Cleveland, USA's United Way charity set out to achieve on Saturday, the 27th of September, 1986. <laughs> With months of careful planning and an ambitious vision in mind, this had all the makings of a historic event that would put the city on the map once and for all. I hate internet narrator voices. I hate it so much. It's not his fault, you know? Like, it's just, it's, it's YouTube. But fuck, man. Like, just talk, you know? Then again... Then again, like, you know, I'm sure if people come across me on YouTube, they're like, ugh, this asshole's doing the YouTuber voice. And, like, I guess maybe a little, but I'm also just like, you know, it's the same. Like, I, I'm speaking loudly into the microphone here, you know, just so you guys can hear me. But, like, if I was, like, just talking normally, like, if you and I met, like, at the store or something, I'd probably talk like this. But I don't do that because I'm doing this, you know. So it's a little different. But on that fateful day, the people of yeah, the content were about to be reminded of the I'm just loud by accident. Gravity. Yeah. What goes up must always come down. Ooh, good intro. United Way is a nonprofit organization which aims to tackle poverty and support local communities by focusing on improving essential areas of daily life like education, income, and health. What would later become <laughs> known as Balloon like Fest 86 <laughs> was organized by the charity as a fundraiser event that would not only benefit the community, but would also be a major publicity stunt for what many believed was an underappreciated city. Sounds good so far, right? The idea for a record-breaking mass balloon release was actually inspired by some friendly competition with Disneyland's first I mean, it's a cool idea. In California, which had previously set the world record in December 1985. To honor I would the like to see that. Anniversary of the park you know? opening in 1955. Balloons are as well great. As what would have been Walt Disney's 84th birthday? Classmates Big from Anaheim balloons. High School helped to fill one million balloons with helium in large tents before they were mass released from the parking lot during an event aptly named Sky Fest. United Way executives knew that their own balloon release had to be much bigger and more memorable than Sky Fest. So naturally, they decided to double the number and aim for a modest record of 2 million balloons instead. How do you now, even fill all of stuff, those? The charity first called upon the LA-based specialized company Balloon Art by Treb, spearheaded by professional oh balloon God. artist Treb Heining, for some much-needed expertise. You can inflate a balloon in three seconds, four seconds, I understand. How long is it going to take these kids with no experience? We're figuring that they'll do about two to three balloons a minute. I've been doing this since <laughs> I was 15 years old, so it's unfair to compare. But uh, two to three balloons a minute, each kid is going to do uh, correctly about 700 balloons or so. Oh, my uh, God. And, and we'll do it in about four to six hours, all the balloons. Heining, alongside Balloon Fest Zone project manager Tom Hollowuck, spent Jesus about Christ, six months dude. in total preparing for Hope the those kids got paid. Event. But no one could have foreseen the chaos that would ensue when the <laughs> big day finally arrived. In order to release such an I would, I would, I, if I, time, if, if, if I had a time machine, this is where I'm going. I'm going here. Be inflated and properly Absolutely. counted first, and that meant I'm going to Cleveland, to Ohio. In the meantime, in an interview, Hollowick explained that he was tasked with designing a structure to safely house the balloons that complied with local building codes, while also being able to withstand up to 60 mile per hour winds. We thought we Didn't you say you also wanted to go to the football game? I would go here first, just then the football game, and I would help the team of lawyers. Building a box to hold balloons in. We didn't realize we were building a building. The final product was a ginormous woven mesh net created by the same company in SoCal who had previously built the cargo nets for the space shuttle. How the do they not pop? Isn't that like a lot of pressure? Going up? Tangular structure was set up on the southwest quadrant of Cleveland's public square. What if they all the just pop? Entire city block, and that's it. Measuring some That'd be so sad. feet long, 150 feet wide, and a towering three stories high. Inside the balloon, <laughs> room, thousands of volunteers were working as fast as they could to keep adding to the 1.5 million needed to set a new world. Oh my record. god. 
Beneath the enormous net, which now bulged above the city skyline like some heaving multicolored mountain. That's kind of neat, though. Just lighting, like, like filling it up and then just letting it go. That's cool. As possible with helium, I like that. Releasing them into the mass of colored latex above. Many wore band-aids on their hands to protect their fingers from Why blistering during the repetitive task of knot tying. Most of the people involved were students from nearby schools, rude. while children also sold sponsorships to benefit United Way at the price of one dollar for two balloons. The entire thing reportedly cost United Way about five hundred thousand dollars to pull off, which is pretty ironic considering it was a fundraising event that supposedly relied on donations alone. Nevertheless, thousands of people gathered around as they anticipated what was sure to be a moment for the history books. I would have but there loved was watching one this unforeseen problem. Well, everybody down here, Bob and Doreen, says the show will still go on. That is tomorrow. Tonight, of course, the workers have a long, long night ahead of them. As you can see behind me back there, the seam in the tarpaulin that covers the uh, the balloon bin that was torn during the storm. <gasps> if you tilt up. You can see the larger balloons, the ones that were to lift the netting off the, uh, off oh, the top of the God. bin and release the million and a half balloons. Those two have been uh, decompressed up there right now. As a matter of fact, half of them have blown down. Organizers hadn't properly considered the possibility of adverse weather, and a storm that blew through Cleveland the night before <laughs> threatened to cancel the event and caused organizers to work through the night. Although fingers remained crossed that the big day would see clear skies, things weren't looking up was corrected, Pining was still concerned by late morning about the weather today. The blues are going to be inflated by about noon. I mean, so if it starts to look like rain, we might just pull a number and release them early. That's something I've got to discuss with United Way. How bad could it with be? no other option, an emergency decision was made. Let the loose the balloons! Be released early, meaning the official number of balloons was actually just... Imagine being in this building. Imagine living here. Oh my god. Shy of one and a half million. At about 1.50 p.m. that afternoon, Dude. United Way untethered the giant net above the city, and onlookers stood by in awe as a blizzard of brightly colored Yay! The sky above them. How whimsical! Thank you, some of these. Some of these what? Hmm? Dude. The balloons like a giant cloud rose over the square, while others tumbled and danced against the buildings. Within no time, the billowing cloud of helium balloons had wound their way around Cleveland's terminal tower and dispersed into the surrounding skyline. Oh, as God. organizers had anticipated, it was quite the spectacle. But as people on the streets below gleefully celebrated the astonishing feat, who could prepare them for the total mayhem that was about to unfold? You might be wondering at this point, where exactly would one and a half million balloons go once they'd been released into the atmosphere? That's a good question. Would they simply float off into space or cause some sort of environmental <laughs> disaster? When a typical helium balloon is released into the air, it can rise to an altitude of up to 10 kilometers before it bursts into tiny fragments and drifts back down. Really? Earth. As altitude increases, the outside air that. pressure diminishes while the pressure from inside the balloon remains the same. They could go up this six causes miles? The material to expand before it eventually explodes. This is basically what United Way thought would happen. They even claimed that the balloons they used were biodegradable. Even better. Okay. The balloons I was going to say, they better be. The sky intended, but it wasn't long until things went south very quickly. As the balloons covered the sky, they immediately came into contact with the forecasted cold front and were blown back in a southerly direction by strong <laughs> wind and rain. In fact, more than one million of the floating orbs dropped back down to Earth almost immediately littering the streets of Cleveland and clogging waterways oh, all over God. East Ohio. As you might expect, this had some pretty devastating repercussions on the streets below as unsuspecting residents were suddenly confronted by a I blizzard mean, of garish colors. Yeah, but that sounds as beautiful. That sounds cool. Avoid the floating objects or took their eyes off the road to gawk at the spectacle overhead. There were reports of minor car accidents across the city and beyond. That's the fine. Winds also Insurance will cover it. A large number of the balloons onto a runway at Burke Lakefront Airport, which had to be temporarily closed. For That's half a little an bit hour, scary. Causing unexpected travel delays. Okay. Suddenly, yeah. it seemed like the publicity Balloon Fest '86 would inevitably attract was not at all what United Way had in mind. Oh the man! The mass balloon release had kickstarted an unfortunate chain of events that would solidify this event as one of the most spectacular marketing fails in history. One of the most bizarre repercussions occurred after some of the balloons traveled as far as Medina County, Ohio, where they landed on a pasture owned by a woman <laughs> named Louise Nowakowski. Imagine not knowing this happened. 
Like, you didn't hear about this happening in Cleveland, and then just 10,000 balloons descend on your property? Nowakowski kept some thoroughbred Arabian oh my horses God. on this land, and one of the animals was so spooked by the sudden shower of balloons that it allegedly ran straight into a nearby fence, causing it to suffer permanent injuries. Nowakowski was pretty peeved, as any proud horse owner might be. In fact, she was so furious that she later sued the United Way of Cleveland yeah. for a whopping $100,000 in damages, which was eventually settled for undisclosed yeah, dude. terms. Things had certainly gone from bad to worse for the organizers behind I'd be spooked if I was that them, horse. But the worst was yet to come. The wind and rain had also <laughs> carried a large number of balloons northwards towards Lake Erie. That's heavy pretty, though. torrents pushed them down into the water unpopped. Now, this is hardly an ideal situation as far as environmentalists were concerned, and the cleanup operation was sure to be costly. But there was a far more pressing situation at hand. On Friday, the 26th of September, the day before the event, two fishermen by the names of Raymond Broderick and Bernard Solser had failed to return from their trip on Lake Erie. The men were reported missing by their families early on Saturday morning. Oh, and God. And rescuers had spotted their 16-foot boat anchored west on the Edgewater Park break wall. The Coast Guard guessed that the boat had capsized in choppy waters and the men had managed to swim towards the break wall before the boat managed to ride itself. As Balloon Fest 86 oh. spectacularly backfired in the center of Cleveland, however, the mission to locate the men had suddenly become ten times harder. Oh, God! Ironically, that big balloon launch in Cleveland today is one of the things that's making this search so tough for the Coast Guard. Dude, that sucks! All these look like heads! Guard. Can you imagine trying to find somebody floating out here or even spotting a life jacket? Oh my god, dude! The, the hundreds of thousands That's of insane. balloons that had been blown down onto the surface of the lake made it nigh on impossible to distinguish between the head of a drowning man and a bobbing balloon. Meanwhile, the search and rescue helicopter oh could no longer god, fly dude. overhead thanks to the asteroid field of floating spheres littering the air. Two days later, on September 29th, it was reported that the local Coast Guard had called off the search for the two missing men thanks to the complications caused by the mass balloon release. Oh my god. Within the next two weeks, the bodies of both Raymond Broderick and Bernard Sulcer would wash up on the shores of Lake Erie. Sure, the balloons themselves hadn't directly killed anyone. That's awful! As as some were concerned, Holy the United shit! They now had blood on their hands. Among these people was Raymond's wife, Gail Broderick, who decided to take legal action against the charity executive yeah. and filed a lawsuit for an eye-watering $3.2 million. Yeah. Gail's lawsuit, just like the one filed by Luis Nowakowski, was eventually settled out of court. Yeah, absolutely. Out, but it certainly didn't bode Dude. too well for the charity. What had begun as a fundraiser event that was planned with the purest of intentions had now quickly that's turned a into a historic catastrophe which cost lives, money, and ultimately the reputation of all those involved in Dude, I had stuff no together. idea. Besides I've never heard of this. Which were seeking millions. The event ended up at a total net loss due to alleged cost overruns. The, balloon, its the balloons didn't kill them. It was just they couldn't find them because of the balloons. So they may have been able to find them, but probably not. But still. Organization. There were plenty of environmental repercussions, too. Contrary to their belief that the balloons would magically buy oh, the no. and vanish off the face of the earth, Thousands of deflated balloons continued to wash up on the shores of Lake Erie for weeks after the event. That's whimsical to as hell. Some reports, many even made their way to Canada's pristine beaches. Considering latex can take anywhere between six months. I'm from and the four area. It's pretty infamous. I'm properly, sorry, you're from Cleveland. It's safe to assume that local wildlife and supporting there, buddy. ecosystems were not too thankful for the mass dumping of deflated balloons. Although Tom Hollowick claimed no one was warned about the prospect of a potential helium shortage, Dude. United Way were also criticized for wasting I so would much gladly of the non die for resource fest. on True. such a trivial event. True. And one letter, if William I had to give my life for any Woodbine, event, Iowa wrote, "It is most distressing to see pictures of the mass release of helium-filled balloons, merely to gratify the urge to observe a visual spectacle." It is Once a spectacle, released, though. The helium is gone forever. And this rare gas is hard to come by and is much needed in non-frivolous scientific and industrial activity. Those are some pretty Wait. damning words, huh? Wait, helium is like a limited resource? I didn't know that. I didn't know helium was like a finite resource. I thought it could just be like, hey, we're going to add this chemical to air and then you could make helium. I didn't know that. It's an element? Oh. Wow. 
well, I don't care one way or the other about no damn shortage. My daughter's going to get balloons. Huh? Nowadays, mass balloon releases are actually banned by certain U.S. states and U.K. councils as well as in many other countries like... I accidentally grabbed Mallory's mug. ...like Australia, while animal welfare and environmental groups like the RSPCA Whoops. and Marine Conservation Society are still campaigning for a complete <laughs> ban. All in all, the event, which was supposed to I had prove a cookie that Cleveland was a city worth talking Mallory about, got me a big ended thing up of cookies fading into a distant memory. Very sweet. Except for those who were humiliated by the entire fiasco, that is. Years after the event, George Fraser, United Way's Director of Marketing and Communications at the time, referred to the infamous Balloon Fest 86 as his greatest success and his biggest... I was going to say, as the greatest achievement of his career. Failure. It's a perfect example of how something can go so hideously Man. wrong without careful Thank you, Blue consideration. Jim and yet the famous Damn, tier one extended through October? Why would you do that? You're crazy. I could die tomorrow. Then you're just wasting money. What if I die and I don't stream? You would look very silly wasting five dollars like that. Phrase all publicity is Don't renew your subs springs to mind. And it's nineteen ninety eight edition. Would it be funny or sad if I died tomorrow? Would that be it'd be kind of funny. And the Guinness Book of World Records eventually recognized the. Oh no, I have a kid. It'd be very sad. The largest ever mass. <laughs> Wait, no, I have life insurance. It'd be funny. Moon release. With okay. A recorded total of one million four hundred. It'll work out. It'll work out. Six hundred and forty-three <laughs> balloons launched. By this point, though, the terrible events that followed Cleveland's Balloon Fest '86 had left a sour taste in people's mouths. What's more, the record will never be beaten because the Guinness World Records rules now state that mass balloon releases, alongside other potentially environmentally no. impactful records such as sky. Lantern releases will no longer be accepted. Unsurprisingly, Boo! both Hollywood and Trevor that all future marketing events would be ground-based only. Honestly, Fuck Guinness, bro. Me, that definitely seems like a good now thing. tomorrow. Maybe a mass bake sale would hey, out. next time, guys. What do you make of Balloon Fest '86? Do you think you? Know I think it's pretty based. Honestly, a day in the life of the richest kids in the world. The kids aren't rich, stupid. The parents are rich. <laughs> what kid is rich? Come on. Okay. Bedtime. Thank you guys for tuning in. Good stream tonight. Pretty good. Except for that one part. <laughs> oh, did you in case you guys are showing up late, let me show you the clawy. Show you what we got. Sorry, Boo Joo Magoo. There's no L in there. Thank you for the gift. What's on the cab? You don't know what's on the cab? That's so embarrassing that you wouldn't know that. I love that game. All right, we got a bunch of prizes. Okay? Peep this one for sure. I don't think it is, Scoop. We looked into it. We did. After, after we heard the stuff, we actually, we freaked out. So I'm getting the sponsorship through stream elements. So I was like, it, it should have been double checked. You know, I was like, oh, shit. But when when we heard about the thing, but yeah, it, it it's not. It's not. I don't like this. People sneak made this. This is too. He's too close to me. It makes me uncomfortable to look at. I don't like that. Did you write that cool winning song? Yeah, I made that. I made that myself. That's my song. I made it. All right, bedtime. I'm so sleepy. Okay. Uh, I don't want to raid anybody. No raid tonight. I'm sleepy. I don't want to think about it. Go wherever you're going to go. It's fine. Thank you, FGC Sensei. No raids. Raidant. Raid shrimps. Let me find a no view channel. Hold on. We're going to find a new person to raid. I feel like I always raid the same people, dude. You know? I'm trying to mix it up. Just chatting. Hey, it's me. What row am I on? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ninth row. Ninth row, champ. 
It was higher before. I swear. <laughs> Big Nasty Giant is watching WWE. <laughs> Ninth row Randy. I, I had to have been on the seventh row Samuel. VTubers. There's so many Simpsons channels, dude. This is crazy. Rate a random Korean streamer. What? Animation Rusa Imas. Oh, he's watching Jack Stauber. <laughs> what? Why? <laughs> what the fuck? Why is he here watching Jack Stauber? He needs $10,000 to upgrade his microphone. Seems like a scam. Scam champ. Furry open ask me anything? I can't read that. You guys will be mean. <laughs> Come on. Woody Woodpecker? <laughs> this is too much pressure. I can't raid these guys. I imagine it's got to be really anxiety-inducing. If you're like a 20, 10 viewer streamer, and then you get raided with like, you know, several hundred people. You didn't sign up for that, you know? Raid the wizard? There's a wizard? Where's the wizard? <laughs> I didn't see a wizard. Where is he? <laughs> Wizard chat from the bottom of my fart. It's uh, that's what I'm saying. That's what I tried the other day. All right, let's go talk to the wizard. We're going to go talk to the wizard. All right, go get some advice from this friendly wizard. Hell yeah. <laughs> 